All right. Um, so I guess for this uh, one, <coughs> for this one, we'll just start it off by I'm Lethal Taco, and you are. All right. I'm Clay Tor. So I guess for this uh, one, oh boy, four twenty-two, which is also acceptable. Maybe I should switch. <laughs> Yep, so unfortunately it's just going to be us two today. Nobody else could really make it for this podcast, which kind of more or less just makes it a let's talk. Yeah. Um, yeah, so first up for the day, let's start talking about the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it obviously just came out with the uh, press release with all the details. And uh, so let me just throw down some basic specs real quick. It comes with a 6.2 inch uh, 720p. That runs at a native uh, 16 by 9 resolution. Um, when you dock it up to its home port, it goes up to 1080p video, so not 4K. Uh, it has an onboard 32 gigabyte storage, and each game comes on its individual cartridge with a battery life anywhere between two and a half to six hours, uh, depending on the relative strength of the graphics of the game. Uh, it can also be charged by USB-C so when you're moving around that can happen and uh, keep you charged up. Uh, it can connect to eight other devices for local multiplayer. Uh, each controller on either side can be taken off and used as a Wii, jo or Wii controller. It has joysticks and buttons to be used as a regular controller uh, known as the Joy-Con. It claims to come with 550 games to start up and has an MR, or MSRP of 300 US dollars to start off. Or excuse me, 299. 299 dollars. Three, three, basically 300. Yeah. So. Which isn't bad. No, 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 I, no, no. Definitely not. I'm nervous because Nintendo. I haven't bought a Nintendo console in three generations outside of my 3DS the new 3DS yeah which that was dumb in my opinion because it doesn't come with a charger um, <laughs> that was like okay uh, uh, but at least between the DSi to the new 3DS it's the same charger so they're plentiful uh, it's interesting like to have it on the go and uh, have it available. I'm I'm nervous about it though. This could be a big problem with Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, it it's very am. That's what I'm looking for here. And uh, shit. I, I can see why they're doing it, and I understand that they want to kind of merge their console and handhelds into kind of one console uh, more thing. or less yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so that they can have both of their audiences come together and uh, more or less not have to split their audience and hopefully try to yeah. get some people who are very very uh, like console console based to try to push them more towards their uh, handheld side and hopefully get their uh, handheld base over to kind of the more the console side and kind of understand why both sides can have their ups and downs but it's kind of you're getting towards that point that I think where it's just kind of too much for one thing like the controllers on either side they look like they could be really good um, I've never had the best experience with the joysticks on Nintendo stuff but, the, uh, only good jo the only good joystick that I've seen on Nintendo is the GameCube. Like, the GameCube had one of the best, like, what, joysticks uh, that I've seen for their consoles. N64, they got worn out and super loose. GameCube, it was, it's, you can pick up a GameCube controller now. It probably hasn't been touched in years. It'll still work like a fucking charm. Yeah, and uh, I, I I definitely can agree with that because I currently have a GameCube sitting to my left, like I got one to my right. So yeah, I 
I've kept that one, and I still play a lot of GameCube games, which uh, apparently there's rumors that it may or may not support GameCube games, but I'm not sure how that would happen, because uh, they haven't released it. There's a, uh, a disc port on it, or... Yeah. Um, Attachment. And, yeah, and all of the games come on cartridges so would that mean that like all the gamecube games that we have now does that mean that we have to like go out and yeah go out and rebuy them um one thing i one thing i don't like about nintendo is their online shop yeah and like when you purchase something it's locked to that device and i really think they need to get past that because it's great. Like, yes, I can buy stuff, but I'm also very hesitant to buy stuff on my 3DS. Because if I lose it, I'm going to have to rebuy it. Yeah. And, and whereas with PlayStation and Xbox, even though they don't have... Well, PlayStation has a dead handheld and an old handheld. But uh, I can re-download them if I get another one. Yeah, and uh, and like generally games for both those things were relatively inexpensive. They were about what, thirty, forty dollars a piece? Roughly, yeah. But for this, since it's now the new console, I can assume that most games are gonna be in the sixty dollar range again. If not higher. Yeah. And if it's gonna be this handheld console hybrid, it, it offers I can see where it appeals to uh, the Japanese who are very much handheld like they love being able to go out and handheld whereas us in the US don't yeah. really do it as much uh, it's the perfect like double option like, especially since they're so uh, like efficient with space just like how the Xbox One has sold like shit over there yeah um it, it doubles as two things and is tiny. Like, perfect. <laughs> and that's not me, like, being racist. That's just, like, a fact. Look at the sales of the Xbox One over in Japan, and it's complete and utter garbage. Like, uh, when they had their release in Japan, there was, like, four people in line that they showed. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, it makes sense. A lot of their space is very, very, very well used because they come from a rather small country that needs all the space it can get for its yeah, population. So, so, so I, th I think the Switch will do great over there. And this being, like, a to-go and at-home console means we're not going to have to suffer from, like, downgraded graphics or hardware failure or hardware limitations like on the current on the current gen of Pokemon when there's more than three Pokemon on screen it slows down to like noticeably yeah and that won't happen with this in fact we can get like a new Pokemon Stadium a full 3D fleshed out Pokemon that we've wanted yeah and you're not going to be stuck on this uh, 40p screens that Nintendo has insisted on yeah. and each one of their handhelds. This is actually going to be a full 720 HD screen. But on that note, wouldn't like a 1080p screen be okay? Because there's plenty of phones that now have that that now have like 2K resolution and so on and so forth, and or 1080p resolution, and a lot of them can play their own games. Which, granted, may not be as large as, like, in scale, yeah. and it may not have quite as many features, but it's supposed to be roughly, like, slightly larger than a phone. It's only six it, and a half inches. I think what they did, honestly, was probably the, the best course of action for the uh, size and what they were trying to do. Yeah, it's slightly bigger than a phone and screen resolution, but probably what they're thinking about is the um, battery life in terms of being able to go on the go. Uh, so sacrificing just a little bit of size uh, for 720 
whereas I can plug it up and get 1080 for more battery life. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just depends on the type of battery that comes with it. Uh, there's, at some point, somebody will probably make a battery extension for it, and then probably later on down the line, they'll probably have an updated version, which mm -hmm. might go up to 1080p. It just seems like a very logical way for it to go. But to me, it just seems like, granted, it's it's great for a handheld. It's absolutely fantastic for a handheld. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm just a little skeptical about it. And granted, I'm also not too partial to handhelds. Uh, I am only to a certain extent, and I like modding my consoles. Like when I get done with a console, I tend to mod it. Yeah. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh. But that's that's a conversation here nor there. But <laughs> <laughs> just like I, it's my Vita is modded at this point because you know Sony won't fucking support the goddamn thing. No. But, uh, that 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 is a complete fucking failure, and I'm mad about that to this day. Um. But it's somebody will mod it. Somebody will. You know, Nyko will... Is Nyko still a company? Nyko will release a, a battery extension. Um, stuff will come along, like re-optimizations. Uh, hell, for all we know, Nintendo could be planning to do a second console later with the 1080p resolution in the hand and the handheld form. And yeah, that's what I was saying, just an updated version of it. Um, yeah. And then moving on from the uh, screen to the 32 gigabyte storage. That seems a little low for most things that are now, especially when it comes to like a home system, that's upwards of 500 gigabytes. I agree, and it's internal storage. Yeah. But with all the games being on cartridge, um, does that mean it's, it's basically just going to be a save device? Uh, is it just going to save to the console while everything else is on the cartridge? Yeah, and that's the thing is, if it comes to the cartridge, are they going to still allow you to download games online? And if you do download a game, that's going to eat up that 32 gigs. That's going to destroy the 32 gigs. Um, I mean, you can expand it, obviously. The... I hope they don't go the Vita route and do proprietary fucking SD cards, because that will kill it. Uh, but at the same time, why? Everything is so fucking tiny. Yeah, my I have the Galaxy S six, and it's a sixty four gigabyte internal memory space. Uh, I have the S seven, and I think it's the same. Yeah, but my phone costed when it was brand new about eight hundred dollars. Yeah. So, that kind of makes sense. Um, this is only going to be about $300, which is great. Um, especially for a console. And it kind of makes sense why they did these cutbacks. They want a console. It, it seems like Nintendo wants a console to be a console again. Where, granted, you can't play Nintendo games on PC. But, like, the, yeah. when it comes down to that quintessential part of whether it's a console or a PC... Is kind of that price range. You got a console because PCs were too expensive and you still wanted to play games. It's so true. Like I, I don't don't get me wrong, I love my PS4 and stuff, but it's also where I watch my Netflix, my Hulu, my YouTube, my Twitch. Uh not just for games. And it seems like this this is going to be a very much a game-centered console with the added bonus of your Netflix and Hulu and whatnot. Yeah. And I I, I definitely like that. It's... Uh, I mean, watching... like You can get the Netflix app for your 3DS and I'm like, this is stupid. Why would I watch Netflix on this? Yeah, like, the screen just isn't 
high enough resolution to matter. Yeah, or, you know, I've got two screens. Like, I, I just haven't downloaded it. I don't want to deal with that. I'm like, I can just, if I'm out on the go, I can watch Netflix on my phone if I really want to. Yeah. And, uh... uh and not have to be connected to Wi-Fi. <laughs> no. no. No, no, no. I think another thing that, uh... That kind of drives me up the wall a little bit about it is that there's supposed to be motion... Uh, games, kind of like the Wii. So each one of the controllers has its own internal battery. But it doesn't tell you how big the battery is, how long the battery will last, and say if you're on the go, what happens if your right or left side dies? <laughs> does it charge oh off? Does it charge off of the uh, off of the screen itself? And if so, then how much battery does that take off of the screen? How much life does that take from the actual console itself, or excuse, or the handheld? Excuse me, at that point in time, it would be. Um, and since it's motion, how would you use the motion? if you're on the go. Now granted, not to say that you would, and that's probably not the best idea. You don't want to actually <laughs> punch somebody while you're on like the train or something. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Sorry, yeah. I was swinging my sword in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just knocked out Mike Tyson in the new punch out. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of it's kind of one of those things, and then if you look at the way that they're kind of designed, I feel like the thumbsticks would get in the way, and sometimes you use the thumbsticks while you're using the motion controls, which uh, I could see flicking left to right every once in a while by accident. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just kind of stuff like that that I'm a little hesitant about, just due to the nature of the beast. Yeah, no, and I agree. It. There's so many unanswered questions, and the fact that it's right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's... It, that's a scary thing. Like, it's... They release it, and we know instantly that it's going to be right away, almost. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, like, the Xbox and PS4 have announced it, and they're like, it's a ways away. Yeah, it's not to the holidays of... 2017. Yeah. Um, which... Now, it claims to have uh, 505 games to start. It comes out with 505 yeah. games. I was I was looking at the, the game's release. Like, the confirmed games. Yeah. And, like, there's a lot that I'm excited about. Like, um... Xenoverse 2, Dragon Quest 11, uh, Farming Simulator. I always love that one. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors, which is a Koi Tecmo game with oh, yeah. Nintendo. So yeah. Dynasty Warriors with Fire <laughs> Emblem characters. Uh, no offense to them. I, I love Dynasty Warriors. Just, yeah. It's one of those things. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, cool. Um, Breath of the Wild, of course, looks amazing. Um, there's a new Bomberman, and I want that. <laughs> like, I love Bomberman, and it's been way too long, and yes. I mean, uh, what I really... What I Ukulele. Uh-huh. Sorry. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Uh, ukulele, which is the rare, uh, revi like, the, the, the Banjo-Kazooie successor, mm -hmm. um, that was kickstarted, and got picked up by Team 17, which is the Worms Makers, and yeah. then the last one is, oh, there's a Steam World game, uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, which a lot of people are really hyped up about, and it, it's... It has the potential of being a really cool game. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Super Mario Galaxy, which I, in my own opinion, was a very fun game. It it kind of to me got a little boring and repetitive, but during the time when I was enjoying it, it was definitely a fun game. Super Mario Galaxy is great, but I'm also afraid that this might be the Sonic 06. Yeah. Of Mario because 
the the humans look human and Mario looks like Mario and you're like what what happened here yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean but let's be honest do you really really want to see a overly humanistic Mario no I would rather see it like Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom universe yeah I mean that's kind of what we were all <laughs> hoping for yeah Oh, I'm terrified. Like, I know it won't be as bad, like, programming-wise as Sonic 06, but sure as fuck, it's in that uncanny valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's where I'm worried. Um, so another thing I was thinking about with this was, I think at some point it's going to have a, like, front and rear-facing camera, so possibly, like, games like Pokemon Go and different kind of, quote, VR or augmented reality games can uh, come in and be used on these devices. Which would be really cool. Like, that would be innovative. Yeah, because um, I, I know that... Uh, I mean, that would mean that they'd ha also have to have, like, a separate... Um, like, a separate camera that you could use while you're at home or something so you don't always yeah. have to be on the move and it doesn't always have to be attached to the uh, console itself but when it comes to stuff like that it, it seemed like uh, especially Nintendo with their handhelds was kind of going pretty hard in the paint and that and then with this it doesn't seem like there's any sort of uh, like showing from that it's it hasn't been shown yet, but I does it even show that there's a camera on the front? Not that I've seen. No, no, it doesn't. So it, it yeah, the back. Oh, let's see. Like it doesn't show. There's no camera. There's a touchscreen, volume button, power button. Uh, audio jack, which is 3.5, which I find hilarious that they have a, a, a 3.5 millimeter jack when they're u using USB Type C. Yeah. Uh, uh, for the simple fact that it it can be an audio port at that point, which I am fine with finally retiring the 3.5 millimeter jack and all things and going to a better sound quality of the USB Type C. Um, that's yeah, just me, and that's a whole separate thing. <laughs> yeah, and the only problem with like that would be like most phones now would have to start switching over to that, which most phones have started switching over to more Bluetooth audio. Yeah. Um, which is fine and all, but so many people still buy like the two or three dollar like three point five headphones and use those. Yeah, and I mean it. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, eventually it can start being phased out and people who want better quality audio can start using stuff like that and eventually it'll start becoming cheaper and cheaper, but as of right now, a 3.5 is a very smart move. Yeah. It's great to have, I just wish they would. Yeah. I like looking towards the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's... Um, definitely this console has me worried for Nintendo and it could be a very big it could be it's a big bold move it's I was talking to a friend about it and he's like I don't think I'll get, be able to get one on day one and obviously scalpers are already fucking buying up pre-orders and selling them for twice the fucking price yeah uh, which I think is stupid um but uh uh, I don't think it's going to be an, another Wii. Because look at the Wii U. The Wii U didn't sell horribly great. No. Um, so, I mean, I'm not a day one person. I wait for reviews, I wait for things, and then I'll go pick it up if I want it. Yeah, I mean... I think the only way that this could get me to go buy one of these on day one is if it had a honest to goodness Metroid Prime game, not like the Metroid Prime Troopers or whatever the that game was. That 
get that away from me. It's not a Metroid Prime game. If I'm talking about Metroid Prime 1 and Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3, we don't talk about. Um, <laughs> but, like, an honest to goodness, back to the, like, original 2. If we could go back oh, to something that, like that and... Or even a Metroidvania, like Super Metroid. Yeah. Give me a new F-Zero game. They have a ton of properties that they just sit on. And, like, Mario is a moneymaker. Zelda is a moneymaker. Uh, they have Star Fox, which the latest Star Fox wasn't great, <laughs> but, like, it was still a new Star Fox game. Um, uh, like, Pokemon Snap. People want a new Pokemon Snap. Um, let's, like, a 3D Pokemon, new Pokemon Stadium, um, a new good Sonic game. Uh, there's so many that they own now that they have the potential to do great things with. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And it's... I, I want the system to be good, but there isn't anything right now that's... Other than Bomberman, that's making me want this system. No. Now... I, ha I have Skyrim. Like, Skyrim's coming out to the Switch. That's great. That's the first Elder Scrolls game for a Nintendo console. Yeah. I own it for PC. <laughs> I think another thing that worries me is that they apparently have Activision games. So that means you're going to try to make Call of Duty uh, portable? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty World at War, my friend used to play it on the Wii. Fucking terrible. Why? Now, now okay, I'm not talking about motion controls, because it's probably going to go back to regular controls, just because of the way the controls are set up. I'm talking more about the fact of, I don't want to hear you raging at Call of Duty on the train, or on the bus. Or while I'm trying to get something from, like, a fast food restaurant. Now, that's assuming... You're going to be able to play online while you're out and about. That is true. That is something that uh, I don't think they'll be able to do. Well, I know that they have they have local multiplayer, so you could have like an up to eight people. So say you go out with a bunch of friends, they all have it, and you're going to like get something to eat. Well, now all of a sudden you're yelling at your buddies, teabagging them, telling them to go f themselves in the middle of McDonald's. <laughs> I was going to say Jack in the Box, but yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> so, in oh, Chili's. And then, okay, now, what about the Ragers? The people who, like, you can watch any Twitch fails or any video compilation of what happens of people who smash keyboards, smash, like, controllers. Holy shit. Are you going to smash your fucking device? Uh, possibly. I mean, like, that's that's kind of the risk you take for, uh, like, handhelds. Like, I've seen many people bounce, like, I haven't seen any of the 3DSs get bounced off of stuff, but I've seen a lot of, like, just Nintendo handhelds, such as Advances, and, uh, like, just the original uh, DS. I've seen those get bounced off of walls a lot, just because I used to know a lot of people who raged at games a lot. So, is it, like, what happens when the screen breaks? Can, can you buy, like, replacement screens? Uh, can you send it in to go get it, tra like, switched out? Uh, what happens if the battery dies on, or fries out on you now? It's no longer a handheld, and it's just a, um... A console? Yeah, so can you replace all these things relatively easily? Do you have to send them into Nintendo? Is there going to be, like, a warranty? Or what's going to go on with this thing? There's just not that much information out there, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it's there's a local game store here that is now an iPhone repair shop as well. I'm like, so is it going to become a, a local game store iPhone repair and Switch repair shop? Yeah, Nintendo Switch repair. <laughs> Certified yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Switch. Certified Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, so if you don't buy Nintendo brand products, will the game read that it's not a Nintendo brand or brand product and commit hierarchy? <laughs> Just fucking fries its own process. Yeah, <laughs> just it it just catches on fire. 
<laughs> Nintendo burnt down my apartment. You shouldn't have been using pirating software. Yeah. <laughs> you should have bought our screen. <laughs> Clearly you didn't. Yeah. Now there's an issue. Yeah, this is your fault. <laughs> no, it... I have so many things I don't... I, the only thing we can do is wait and see. Yeah. And, uh... I don't know, I might have to pick one of these up on day one just so I can do, like, my own handheld review, and uh, then I can talk a little bit more about it in yeah. detail. Uh, but as of right now, that's pretty much all the information we can give on it, and... I mean, that's kind of my... I hope... I absolutely hope that this goes well. Oh, yeah. Because this could have the potential to a, do a lot of good things. But it also has the potential to be absolutely horrible. <laughs> And with Nintendo, it's literally a 50-50 shot. Yeah, it's one or the other, and there is no difference. <laughs> yeah. Like, we went from the GameCube to the Wii. Yeah, and the Wii sold like fucking hotcakes, but had a number of other issues. Yeah. So. And, and let me tell you, the GameCube is a sturdy-ass system. Oh, yeah. It's got a handle. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, mine, uh... Mine, my ceiling leaked, and there was water everywhere. I dried it out, plugged it in, and it continued to work perfectly. <laughs> now, uh, let's not forget, with the GameCube, when you really wanted to annoy people, and you turn it on, you held down the Z button. Are we gonna have oh, some? God. Yeah, are we gonna have some way to annoy our friends with the? the uh, Is it gonna with make the, switch? the click? Is it gonna keep making the click? Is it going to keep doing the switch or the uh, squeaking noise like the GameCube did and then have a bunch yeah. of children laughing? Because God, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was my favorite thing to do. And it, to this day, people forget about it and I drop it on them and they want to strangle me. And it makes me laugh every time. Now, so. That's the switch. Yeah, so moving on swiftly. To uh, the slightly more home console than console than handheld, uh, the Xbox Scorpio and the PlayStation Pro, because uh, absolutely nobody knows about the Neo yet or Morbius or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, so for well, yeah, the whatever the fuck the next one is. Yeah, so for the <laughs> Xbox Scorpio, I'm gonna run down all the specs that they have out right now. It has uh, an eight-core CPU, six teraflops. Uh, graphics capability, uh, native 4K gaming, and there's no uh, memory specs on it. It has VR support, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, what's it called? It's speculated to start at around 600 bucks, which is kind of what you can assume for most like home, brand new consoles now. Like even the Xbox One yeah. has finally gotten down to like 350 bucks. That's like the basic yeah. 50 gigabyte one or whatever. <coughs> Which, since uh, now every Xbox game has to be downloaded, it's nothing. Yeah. That's like one or two games. Yeah. Um, I mean, I upgraded my, PS, uh, my PS4 to a 650 gig, and fuck, I, it's a struggle to fucking keep space. Yeah, and then with the uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, it comes with a 64-bit uh, 8-core processor, just like the Xbox. Uh, it comes with a 2.4 teraflop uh, graphics processing, which the original PlayStation 4 only came with a 1.84 teraflop. So quite a large increase from that, with upscaled 4K. Um, yeah. which uh, a 1 terabyte storage size. Yeah, one terabyte storage, and the starting price in MSRP is a hundred or five hundred sixty dollars with VR support. Um, and so let's uh, real quick, let's just talk about what a teraflop is. Essentially, a teraflop is the amount of processing a computer or a system can do. Um, and so for let's say a Nvidia GTX uh, ten eighty has about 8.9 teraflops. So we're doing about two-thirds of a uh, 1080 
in this new the Xbox. Card. Yeah. It's the biggest card on the market. Yeah, so we're doing about two thirds of that, which is actually really good. For an entire console, it's only going to cost about 600 bucks, whereas just that graphics card alone is $600. Yeah. Six to $700. Um, that's insane. They're, they're putting a lot of power into something that's rather cheap, but that's not to say it won't have overheating problems. It won't have a myriad of other things. This is just hoping for the best that if everything works well, this could be a powerhouse of a uh, console. Yes. But my only problem with consoles at this point is coming with old age um, and realizing PC Master Race <laughs> is, is a term for a reason. Uh, it, it's two-thirds of a, t of a 1080, yes. But it will only, always be that. It, it can't upgrade. Um, which, for me, go like... With spaces of, I love collecting things. I love collecting video games. Like, I have a shelf, two shelves, three shelves of video games. <laughs> like, I have a ton. But collecting console after console after console with no backwards, com well, obviously these will have backwards compatibility for the current systems. Yes. But without backwards compatibility, it doesn't make sense for me to go pick out, a, like, the only reason why I personally want an Xbox One is for the Rare Replay. That's it. That's the only thing that it has sold me on that my PS4 or my PC doesn't have. Well, um. uh, for me, I when it comes to console, I've always been partial to Xbox. I've always enjoyed Xbox more than I have. Uh, PlayStation, I think the controllers fit my hands better and they feel better in my own hands in my own personal opinion. And I also like the UI better. Um, but when it comes down to this, you're almost getting into like a budget computer range. Which, yeah. at that point, you may as well go for a computer. You can do so much more on a computer. And there's so many more like games. Now, I understand that Xbox has their own exclusives like uh, Halo and the Forza games. And then the PlayStation has their own exclusives like... Uh, Let's see here, God of War, The Last of Us, which is actually the primary reason why I will buy a PlayStation 4 is when The Last of Us 2 comes out. Uh, uh, Uncharted. Um. Yeah. And they've got all those games that you can, or that they have for their own console. Mm -hmm. But it almost seems like as consoles, or as PCs get better and better, uh, different... Uh, different equipment for them becomes cheaper and cheaper and you can make PCs for a relatively cheaper rate and I think the biggest thing with uh, I, I, I believe it was the Xbox CEO who said that basically the Project Scorpio was going to be the final iteration for Microsoft more than likely for doing a console and basically the end of consoles as it is known because they're just more becoming home entertainment systems and you could easily play most of these games on a mid-range PC, which you can I mean, buy for $600. Absolutely. Or you can now with uh, Valve with the Steam Link. Like, you can just connect your TV to the Steam Link, link it to your PC, and boom, you suddenly can play your games in big picture mode on your TV. Yeah, and like, then, like, even with the Xbox... You can play most of the games that come on Xbox with Windows 10. If you have Windows yeah. 10, you can play the game. Yeah. Like, you can play Forza. You can play... Oh, I'm sorry. There's a, there's only one other game I want for Xbox One, and that's Crackdown 3. Because Crackdown is just a fun fucking game. Um, but, yeah. It's... Uh, there's not... There's not much. There really isn't. And, like you said, everything's budget PC level at this point. You have a 1070 card in a fucking console, essentially. Yeah. Or a 1080 card. Yeah, a 1070. Well, I'm you still... have about two-thirds of a 1070 or 1080 card. Yeah, but... that's... For $600? Shit, I could build a PC. Yeah, and I mean... <laughs> or, like... That's... that's... 
for six hundred dollars you're getting a card you're basically getting a card a uh, a very generic motherboard a very generic power supply um, and a very generic Wi-Fi adaptability yeah and everything other than the graphics card itself that is graphics capability for the Xbox is generally just going to be basic it's going to be how much power can we get out of this okay it can't reach the level we want it to so what's the next level up that's going to be as cheap if not slightly more how cheap can we yeah. build these to get them where they need to be and that's that's what has always been a problem with uh, console generations uh, Sony took a loss on the PS3 but still put it out Xbox took a loss on the 360 and still put it out uh, overall I I believe with this iteration this uh, what is this 8th generation 8.5 I'll yeah. say yeah um we're seeing that consoles are becoming less and less of a thing. Uh, it's no longer like Xbox versus Sony versus Nintendo or Nintendo versus Sega uh, because back then it was more of a dynamic thing. Like you got PCs for whatever reason in the 90s just weren't that great. No. Uh, uh, but consoles were the dream and had this new thing and we got so many things out of it but now it's with cross platforming and releasing of everything on uh, on everywhere you're less likely to buy a console when I can buy a PC yeah everything is much more disposable at your fingertips. PCs you can upgrade constantly, so you're not going out and constantly buying new stuff. Um, yeah. Or being stuck with the same hardware until something new comes along. Yeah. Uh, one thing I am kind of excited though about for the Xbox was uh, they were rumoring VR Fallout 4. That would be interesting, but yeah. at the same time, it'll come to PC. <laughs> Yeah, at some point it would. Um, yeah. But I know that both of these new game consoles are going to have VR support. Um, Which VR is still in its infancy. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, just like 4K. And, uh, and that's the thing about going native 4K is... Uh, like, I, I don't know how most 4K... TVs handle gaming. I know my brother, uh, he has a $6,000 TV. Jesus. He works on a shipyard and he works for the <laughs> Navy. He doesn't have to worry about it. Um, yeah. But he owns a 4K TV that refreshes fast enough for him to play games, but it's $6,000. I will not... I'm never an early adopter. Like, I just got a, a fucking smart TV. Uh, and the only reason why I didn't even pay for it, the person died, so I got a new TV. Like, yeah, like I, uh, which by the way, there's no Twitch app, and I'm very angry about that. Slap. Um, <laughs> I still I own a just regular 1080p plasma TV that I bought for fifty bucks because I don't play too much yeah. uh, console. Uh, most of what I buy is for my computer, um, which I still need to upgrade my monitors because the monitors I have are like two hundred to hundred dollar monitors, but they're kind of cheap and may or may not have came from somewhere I'm not going to disclose. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. and it just seems like for me. Spending six thousand dollars, granted it's for a sixty-four inch TV. You could probably get some now that are like a grand or so, fifteen hundred dollars that are about forty-five inch TVs. But even still, that's if you were to pay, 
If you were to put $1,600 together for a computer with monitors, uh, keyboard, and so on and so forth, you could buy a pretty good computer. Yeah. And granted, you could use the Xbox for more than just your console. If you still have television, you can use it for that. You can use it... I know some of my buddies have uh, TVs that they use on their PC as another monitor so they can watch like Netflix, Hulu, and other streaming stuff on there. Or if they're like playing a game and they want other people to watch, they'll just stream it to the TV and to their monitor so they don't have to look over their shoulder. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's still kind of... It's like... Is it really worth buying a TV when like a monitor just is significantly cheaper and it just Sometimes doesn't have sound? Better. Yeah, it just doesn't have sound. And well, some monitors do. Monitors now, yeah, like I have a BenQ monitor and it's got sound. Um, and it looked my my monitor's newer than what my old TV was. My old TV's an LG like thirty two inch from six years ago. Yeah. And I played. My friend was playing Destiny and side by side in the same room, like. It looked a thousand times better on my monitor than it did on my television. Yeah. Like... <laughs> and I mean, that probably has to do with the distance and how big it is, because that's a 1080p TV and that's a 1080p monitor. The 1080p monitor is going to look better due to the pixels being tightly packed. Yeah. But... but it, it was just the color depth and everything was, was so much better. Yeah. In comparison. But yeah, I... I... I do agree that this is kind of the death of the console. I think the console is kind of going to start going away because people are starting to realize how cheap you can build a computer and how much more you can do with them. Yeah. Um, not to get on the PC Master Race train, but I, I do enjoy my computer. I barely buy any game for consoles except for exclusives because those are the few games that I want to play. The, the last game I bought was Digimon Cyber Sleuth. I think it's on Steam. Let me, let, me, let me go ahead and look that up. Is it, is it on Steam? If it's on Steam, I've made it horrible. It sounds like a Sony only. Yeah. It, it, it is Sony only. Uh, there's Mas Digimon Masters Online, which is a free-to-play game. Uh, but, yeah. The game looks interesting now that I'm on Steam shit. Go away from Steam. Click off Steam. <laughs> yeah, leave. want to look at it. Abort. Abort. <laughs> Abort. I'll find something. I want to buy it. Yeah, and that, that's kind of the unfortunate thing about Steam is that you just kind of get hooked into it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And, then, like, a lot of the new consoles, their controllers can be used on PC. So if you want to still use a controller, you can do that. And most games support controllers. Yeah, they they sell adapter. They sell USB plugins. Yeah. Use your PlayStation and Xbox One. Xbox One allows you to custom make your own fucking controller. Yeah. Which I totally thought about doing because, you know, I want one. <laughs> like most of these, all you need is some sort of like Bluetooth capability on your computer, and you can use. It without any sort of like extra um peripheral. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like we're just getting towards the end of the lifespan of consoles. There's just it's getting to that point. Yeah. I I agree. It with being able to make a like a decent computer small enough. Like again, this is uh like I said with the, earlier about Japanese, it's small, tight conformity. You can make a fucking microcomputer like easy. Shit, you can make classic consoles with Raspberry Pi, and that's fucking smaller than my hand. Yeah, and those things are relatively cheap too. Relatively like forty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> like a little bit of a conversion thing. Pay for the wires. Bam, you've got a fucking NES Classic. You've got a SNES. You've got whatever you want on it. Yeah, and it's just, like, I feel like at some point consoles will make a return, only because 
if the consoles die out, the PC is going to more or less take off, and then eventually, um, like faster than already has, I feel like eventually the PC will just get a little too expensive for its own good, and then consoles yeah. will try to like start making their way back because there can be cheaper components for the consoles, and everything can be standardized. And then, yeah, um, once it's standardized again then I think PCs will have to start kind of reining it back in, and then once that happens, I feel like the console is more or less the tethering to, like, ground yeah. level for PCs. And, uh, you know, I could I can understand that. Like, that, that makes sense. Now, I don't think, like, if there is a next-generation console, I think past this point, um, I think discs are going to be done. Uh, we are definitely moving back towards a solid media. Yeah. And digital media. A digital and solid media. Uh, digital media is a bit tricky. Um, only because ownership and all, all that jazz. Uh, yeah. My computer fucking being weird. Okay. Uh, so just one. Um, but it's uh, digital and solid media is becoming the thing again mm -hmm. which I'm okay with because now we have the expansion of it yeah um, it w was limited back then because of in, what was it it was limited back then because uh, various other things like cartridge space was very tiny but the CD was suddenly like fucking monumentally larger um a la why PlayStation beat the N64 yeah but, but now fucking yes you can store uh 4.7 gigabytes on a single layer Blu-ray. Um, don't ask why I know that. <laughs> uh, For something that's much smaller and more compact, you can fit upwards of 16 gigabytes. Uh, for significantly cheaper. And yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's go. I'm gonna go to Amazon and type an SD card. Although, I do feel like, I understand why things are getting smaller, but it gets to that point to where it's like, when are things too small? Okay, so a 16 gig SD card from SanDisk is $6. A 64 gigabyte Ultra Micro XC SanDisk is $16. That's three Blu-rays right there. Four Blu-rays. 120... 128 gigs is 40 bucks. Like, and what's this? 200 gigabytes of up. You're spending what looks to be like anywhere between $89 to I don't know why you would spend $300 when you can buy the $89 one, but you know. <laughs> Now, Blu-ray discs are still cheaper. Yeah. They're still cheaper, but it, it's just... It comes to that point to where it's not practical. The uh, A drive... I literally just built a PC without a Blu-ray drive. Because I had that option, too. Yeah, like, I don't have one on mine either. I have a regular disc drive, but I do not have a Blu-ray drive. Because... Most Blu-ray movies you can download or you can stream in 4K or Ultra HD. Yeah, the only reason why I have a drive on mine was because I don't know if you have fries up in Seattle, but oh, we do. It it was like forty bucks for the Blu-ray drive, and I was like, okay, yeah. like why not at that point? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, eventually they'll they'll come to that point where it's super cheap and so on and so forth. And some like some 
some things I do still buy in Blu-ray. Like, I bought the Deadpool movie in Blu-ray because I enjoyed the movie and I wanted to support it. Yeah. So I can, I can stream that wherever I want, but I still bought the physical media to support the yeah. movie. Now, the only other thing that, like... Ask me how many times I've used my drive, though. <laughs> Probably not a whole lot. Like, I, I have... I think I've played that movie one time off of the Blu-ray. I, I, I've used mine for my PC once to install Windows and, like, one other thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's it. It's just not being used as much. Now, granted... My PC doesn't have one. I don't know if yours has one, but I don't have a uh, micro SD card slot, which I think my next I one don't. I'm going to put in, so mm -hmm. I can use them. But a lot of them, there's just USB driven ones where you can just go out and buy little like USB micro SD card slots. That's that's what I have. Is I have this little like uh, it's literally a circle that's attached to the keychain that I have by my uh, on my light. That's got a slot for it, and I just plug it in USB. Like, oh no, I have. Well, actually, I'm using all of my fucking USB slots on my computer at this point, so I need to fix that next time. <laughs> but it's uh, like I just plug that in, and bam, there I go. Um, which I have an. I might plug that in eventually. <laughs> I have a USB plug for, um, uh, or a USB, like, four-port extender that doesn't require power, so I'm going to plug yeah. that in. But yeah, I do yeah. feel like, uh, solid media is kind of the way that we're going back to, if not digital. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I definitely think digital will become more prominent. But solid media is still a thing. Yeah. Which I think is going to be uh, funny. I really hope they go back to the uh, old VHS coming soon. Oh, God. Um, and I think we <laughs> need to go... tracking? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we need to go back to that, but instead of saying coming soon to DVD or coming soon to Blu-ray, it should be coming soon to microSD near you. Just as loud and just as obnoxious. I think that would be uh, a little a little too good. Um, would make me very happy. Also, I just enjoy making people really, really miserable. And uh, those were far too loud whenever they came on. No matter what <laughs> volume you had it on. You could have it at 3 and your TV was now at 70. It was like fucking max volume for no reason yeah how, how can I guarantee that I will wake everybody up in the house oh let's go watch uh, any VHS movie anyone whoa yeah god help you if it was Disney oh god help you if it was TH, uh, THX oh man oh boy you were waking up the entire neighborhood I just bought a pair of speakers and I still <laughs> the like I bought a pair of Cliff Lascala which are like eight thousand dollars for a pair of speakers yeah um i have not done the thq sound yet to them no not the thq I mean, the thx oh thx that's what i mean thq i was thinking of the the game company that went out yeah. of business I, yeah. I uh i made them go out of business because of the sound no yeah. thx yeah thx uh, that's uh that's the true test that's the true test that's a clear Test how crisp your sound is and how well your ears will bleed. Yeah, that's uh. I hope you don't like skin because uh, it's gonna blow it off. All right. You know they don't do that in movies anymore either, which is sad. Yeah, they. I, I think I think we need to start making movies again that have random, really, really loud scenes. Yeah. Because you know, don't or worry like about it. it. You don't need eardrums. You don't need eardrums. You go into the theater, you get that th. THX sound, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, alright, so, moving on swiftly, uh, 4K gaming. Um, I, I'm excited, but at the same time, I am not an early adopter. Truth. Um, so, 
uh, from the little bit of research that I was doing, most uh, 4K <laughs> um, graphics cards you can get for PCs are going to run you about six to seven hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, which is really really high, and uh, generally That's half of my computer. <laughs> yeah, generally not going to be the most easily to build. And then a full PC cost that can run that 4K 60 FPS gaming uh, experience for you is probably going to cost you about 2500 bucks. That includes gaming 4K monitors, which generally aren't there. Most of the ones that you can find now are 2K that are for gaming. Most 4K ones don't have a fast enough refresh rate for like Twitch shooters and stuff like that. Yeah, not for Overwatch, not for Call of Duty, not for anything. Yeah, Just no. no. Yeah, no, if you're going to go for, like, strategy games, yeah, that's fine. It, you don't need the refresh rate, but for Twitch shooters and very fast-paced games, 2K is going to be the highest you're really going to be able to go for high refresh rate. Um, yeah. Our, our gra- One thing I've always noticed is that, graphically, we're always ahead, and everything else tries to catch up. And, yeah. Like, even TVs are, like finally coming into 4k but they're not cheap um, no like it it took a while for and they're still at least they're not massive anymore but like example the first hd tvs were fucking huge oh yeah the giant tube ones the like 40 inches that weighed almost 150 pounds they were about four feet or four and a half feet tall about three feet wide like, yeah, from the screen to the back of it, and they were the single most cumbersome thing you can attempt to pick <laughs> up and move. Yeah, or you know, it, it, it's like its own floor base, and God help you if you wanted to have the TV in a specific spot because all the like my friend has one. All of the you all the ports are on the bottom of the fucking TV, and you've got to like. If you have anything around the TV, you're going to have to move that and then put it back just to plug in your fucking HDMI. But also, that's why I don't like, uh, like, wall mounts. Wall yeah. mounts scare the hell out of me. Because yeah. fuck that noise. I had a buddy who, uh, in their house, uh, when this is when it was first coming out, uh, first coming out with the large HD uh, TVs. They'd actually cut a hole in the wall. So they can oh push the TV into the wall. <laughs> so it wasn't protruding as far. But every time you had to plug something in, they had to pull it out of the wall. Plug it into the back of the TV. Figure out a way to move the cord so it wasn't going to like explode when you pushed it back in or cut itself in half. Yeah. And then leave it that way. That's ridiculous. That is a bit much. Yeah, so that was kind of the lengths that people went to if you wanted a flat screen, low profile TV back in that time. But it, it's like these new 4K uh, like gaming setups, I don't think competitive gaming is going to go to 4K for a while. No, there's no reason to. It's got to no. come down to the... It's, it's not even about like cost. But it's got to come down to the everyman level. Yeah. That's where, honestly, PC gaming comes from. Or PC competitive gaming comes from, is everybody being able to access it. Yeah. Um, and it just so, seems... It seems like, uh... Like, I know... Not to, mention, not to mention, if you go... Like, sorry to interrupt, but... No, you're fine. If you go to a tournament that has it and your team hasn't played on it, and, like, both teams haven't played on it, yes, that's suddenly an even field, but if one team has that advantage, like, that's an unfair advantage, in my opinion. Yeah. And there's, like, a lot of games that come through, and uh, when they're looking at these uh, 4K resolution stuff, a lot of them come out and they don't look at the pixels any much as more like I know a lot of like competitive Twitch shooters you're looking for like single pixels that are out of place or different colored and so on and so forth yeah. but when it comes to 4k you can't you can't keep the same visibility on it you can't keep like 4k p- 
pixels in a line. It, everything is now very, very, very... Like, I think it's better in a way. Because you can... Uh, you can use it in such a way where it's now more about visibility rather than pixel noticing. Mm -hmm. But it seems like competitive Twitch shooters, you're going to see a lot more people flipping their eyesight back and forth or staring at one spot for a while or doing weird, odd angle stuff like that. Yeah, it's... It's going to be interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's going to be a while before it's it's to to the everyman level. Yeah, definitely going to be a while cuz uh even right now 2K monitors are still relatively expensive, which 2K gaming's the thing. I've seen it happen. It's very much out there and it's pretty prominent to say the least, especially with a lot of like new releases. A lot of them are trying to reach at least a 2K Mm -hmm. So I can see the next, like, volley of games coming out being 4K games. Yeah. They're not going to be the greatest 4K that you've ever seen, but it's going to start that 4K revolution. As soon as game developers and uh, stuff like that and, like, more uh, TV shows and streams and videos and stuff like that are going to start coming out in 4K, it's going to kind of push the market to work a little bit more towards 4K and kind of get that ball moving. Yeah, but as it stands right now, the ball it, it has to start moving. Right now, it's more or less just kind of stationary and sitting there. Yeah, it was stationary. It's, it's just like from when we went from standard definition to high definition. It was a slow ball. Yeah, and now like it, or going from VHS to DVD, slow ball. Um, DVD to Blu-ray really didn't pick up as much, but you know, yeah. Um, I'm still holding out for that HD DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still holding out for that A track. I know they'll make a comeback. They're going to make a comeback. No. No. Uh, but it, it's. Uh, it's definitely. Uh, it, the ball is starting to roll. It's, it's just starting, though. So give it, I hate to say it, if we're doing this in a year, let's come back in a year and compare. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely in a year, maybe two. Um, I think that's it'll, when... It, it'll be the new standard. I don't think it'll be the new standard, but I think it'll be coming into its own. I think 4K will definitely be being pushed harder. Yeah. And I, I believe that 4K will start being easier to uh, acquire. Yeah. Holy crap. So I have um, AGDQ in the background. Kind mm -hmm. of just, I've had it on my TV all week because I love awesome games done quick. And this is off topic. Uh, but they've hit, and I'm just watching it. Of uh, like $125 donations constantly currently, and they're at $1,234,000 for cancer. Oh my goodness. For cancer. Wow. So, like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I was watching a little bit of that too. I watched the uh, Sly Cooper uh, one they did in like an hour and four. Yeah. And he was saying, like, he could have cut a couple more minutes here and there if, the, uh, if he had hit everything correctly. But he messed yeah. up a couple times. But yeah, it's kind of it's kind of insane to see those games that like when you were younger you played it took you hours upon hours upon hours of frustrating replaying and so on and so forth to just watch him get destroyed. Oh yeah. In such short was, amounts was, of time. I was I was talking with Rohan. Rohan hates speedrunning <laughs> because it's uh you just beat the game. Like you did, you didn't do everything, you just beat the game. Yeah, and I'm like, but chances are they've played that game through and through, and like they know it in and out. Like I can tell, you, I've played Ocarina of Time like a handful of times. Yeah, I can go. This is what you do. This is the order you go in. I know the story. If I wanted to speed run it, like 
I don't need the story at that point. I'm just no. beating the game. Yeah, <laughs> no. And, uh... I don't know. Usually, like, when I play a game for the first time, I usually go through and I'll play a game to its completion, one from the end, and I'm just kind of hitting the main storylines. And I think that's how I play it the first time, then I'll go back through and I'll play it a second time, then I start doing a bunch of side quests, and I start doing a bunch of, like, little things here and there that you normally wouldn't do. You start looking around, you start looking at things. But... I've never been a speedrunner. If I'm going to revisit a game, I want to find something new about it. Yeah. I I personally don't think I could ever do speedrunning, only because I I like completing games. Yeah. Uh, but I appreciate watching these people destroy stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's like, definitely there's definitely a uh, pretty good uh, reason why speedrunning is very cool, like especially when there are games that are designed for speedrunning, like uh, Dust or whatever that one was. Yeah, Dust. Uh, there's a number of games. But yeah, a lot of those oh. games are designed for you to memorize the mechanics, memorize what's going to happen, and try to beat their times. Like even with uh, like Trials games, a lot of those are very much about speed and how fast you can do it. Yeah, they have a, a par. They yeah, a par. Um, like currently, the next game on deck is Dark Souls Three. Like, cool. Oh goodness! Somebody is going to is going <laughs> to destroy it. Oh god, I hope they do. Um, <laughs> I want to see somebody just absolutely destroy that game because that game destroyed me. All right, so uh, moving on swiftly, let's get into some actual uh, real life news. So. On the 12th of January 2017, El Salvador had their first recorded uh, day with no homicides in two years. Uh, that's pretty that, fucking spectacular. That, especially in El Salvador. Yeah. Like, it's it's a gang it's a gang riddled country. Like that's weird to say, <laughs> but where where murder is a common occurrence. Like, it's it's an everyday thing. It's impressive that, you know, even for one day. Yeah. It's nice. Um, it's, it's, it's a goal. Like, let's go for, like, maybe one tomorrow. Can we get that? Yeah, it seems like, uh, it, it seems like the way that this is going <laughs> is it's, uh, like, every two years or so, they seem to get, like, a, a day with no homicides. And, um... Yeah. The last recorded day was uh, actually January twenty second of two thousand fifteen. So it's almost exactly a year. It's or exactly two years. It's off by ten days. Two years. And then uh, I feel like January is just the low time for them in the murder murder game. I mean, maybe, but <laughs> it, it seems like even before that there were apparently a couple days in uh, two thousand thirteen, but I couldn't get exact dates on those. I was looking around, I couldn't find any. Yeah, but it seems like every two years they kind of slow down. And now, um, there's all these gangs that get thrown in there or thrown around in El Salvador, and it's a relatively small country, but it has such a high number of gangs just to try to keep themselves safe from every yeah. other gang. Because one gang starts from trying to keep safe from another gang, so on and so on and so forth, until eventually it, it's no longer about being safe. It's Okay, I'm a Get part a of. Curve. Yeah, you're 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 in a gang because you're in a gang. Yeah. That's just the cool thing now to do, and, which is really unfortunate and it, it's it's really bad. But um, they have actually El Salvador's put a lot of money into their uh, anti-gang uh, task force, and there's so many gangs now, unfortunately, but. Uh, that they actually have to cover their face. They have to cover their face to protect themselves and their families. Because it's gotten to that point where they're just so deeply entrenched in everything that they will find you. Yeah. Like, but if you got a face, they're going to get you. Yeah, but you can look at this and it's almost like... They're pretty much a military. Like, they are basically a full-on military operation... It's more or less fighting a civil war between hundreds upon hundreds of different uh, gangs 
to try to retake their cities and retake everything back, which is kind of inspiring. And I, I hope that it it gets better because, like, in the first three months of 2016, it, it was average a homicide an hour. God. And then to have, like, a year later, a year later they have a day with no homicide. Yeah. Within the, f- within the first month. It, that to me it's is impressive. yeah to, to me that's a that's pretty much a miracle that means that the task force is doing their jobs that means that stuff is going on down there and i hope i truly hope that el salvador can uh keep going with this yeah to change and get better and and not have to have this fear this constant running fear yeah <coughs> Um, it's it's good to see. It, it, even if it is just today, it's a positive thing to go from. Yeah, it's it's we've had it this day. Let's get more. Yep. Um, another thing in the news is California's drought. I mean California. So, um, we've gone in this past week and a half. We've had enough rain to bring down. 40% of the state to not being in drought anymore. It's at like 2%. And it's only January. Like, we've got three more months of rain. Yeah. And we've been in a drought for five years. Yeah. Like, it's, and like, yeah, we've had flooding and mudslides and stuff, but I think all of us here are like, we're willing to take that if we have enough water. Yeah. <laughs> Because I mean, minor, these minor inconveniences. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I live in Washington, and uh, I'm so spoiled by rain and constant downpours that most people here actually hate the rain. I love it because I've lived in other uh, states for like a couple years, months here and there, and yeah. I've lived in a lot of states where they don't get a lot of rain, or when they do, it's just super, super hard downpours for like an hour, and then there's nothing for like two or three weeks and it's a super hard downpour yeah. and i enjoy washington i love i love the weather here i i even when it's like 40 degrees and 100 percent humidity so it feels like it's two degrees i'm i was born and raised here i'm so used to it i don't care i used yeah. to i used to live in colorado for two years and i'd go out when it was like five degrees outside and shovel snow and shorts and a, like winter jacket and boots you're fucking crazy um, it, it, it didn't feel cold to me because I'm used to high humidity. So everything yeah. just kind of, um, like, it, it just, it felt like it was maybe 50 degrees outside to me. And I, I, I was fine with that because my body can retain heat really well. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nice to see that my state is, you know, not going to die of thirst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I thought that was just really nice. I just saw that on my Facebook, and I was like, oh, this is good news. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> uh, we'll keep up with the good news on uh, with El Salvador and the reduction in drought. Um, so that's really good news. That means uh, you guys will actually uh, be able to continue with agriculture, because I know that was in a very steep decline with the uh, five-year drought. Oh, yeah, and California makes... You don't realize it. California makes so much. Mm-hmm. Like, not only beef, but like avocado, walnuts, almonds, um, broccoli, strawberries. Yeah. All sorts of shit. Like, I didn't even know. And I live here, and I'm like, we make this much percentage of it? Holy shit. <laughs> Oranges. Oranges is the other one. Yeah, it was like a surprising amount. Oh yeah, no. Uh, uh, if, if I can remember correctly, uh, California and Florida are the two largest exports of uh, oranges. Yeah, and it's like every my friend who moved to Vermont and came back was like, "You don't understand what it's like to have like not have California oranges readily available." Like I take it for granted at this point. Like what I have in the local vicinity because I live on the edge of a farm community mm-hmm. 
like we have peaches, oranges, apples, you name it, like all locally grown here. Cherries, pistachios, um, like I take we take it for granted living here. Corn, Brentwood corn is some of the best corn in the country. Like people on the East Coast want the corn. Yeah. And we're just here like, it's ten cents for, like, five. Okay. And they're like, cool, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's it's just impressive. Yeah. And, uh... So, moving on from that, which is very, very good news, hopefully the uh, West Coast at least will get a drop in some of the prices on uh, produce. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um... <laughs> Hopefully making eating healthier, easier. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about electric cars. Uh, so, I, so, I'm excited. Yeah, so recently, <laughs> uh, recently VW announced their concept for the electric microbus. It's supposed to come out in uh, 2020 with its own iBuzz, which is its self-driving... Uh, autonomous uh, driving system. Uh, so, yeah. it, uh, it's supposed to have a range of 270 miles so in three years, uh, 270 miles off of a microbus that they didn't give the price of. But the current Tesla 3, or Model 3, has a range of 215 miles. The Nissan Leaf has a range of 107. And the Chevy Bolt has a range of 190. So, they're, that's... That's about 60 miles of extra range yeah. that uh, they're, they're hoping for in about three years. Uh, almost three years at this point, <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what, that's a lot of battery upgrades to get in that three years. Um, yeah. And they're only estimating, if you even have just the basic wall charger, about a 12-hour charge time. Which isn't that bad. No, that's ridiculous uh, for getting that much power. Yeah, and and chargers are becoming more prevalent everywhere. Yeah. Uh, at gas stations and whatnot. It's becoming much more of, oh shit, where am I going to charge at? Yeah, even just regular parking lots. They're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you go into the city, like you go into San Francisco, they're fucking everywhere. Oh yeah, they're all over the roads. They're all over, like, sidewalks and stuff. Um, yeah. It's supposed to have 369 horsepower. Doesn't say how much torque, but ooh, that's in a Damn. like yeah, that's in a minivan essentially. Yeah. <laughs> like, why do why does the minivan need that much? I don't know, um, but that's <laughs> that's pretty. I know the dr the driver's seat flips 180, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, so the uh, that, that was kind of going to be the next thing I was going to get to is because uh, with the ID buzz, it's supposed to drive by itself. Uh, and that's supposed to be ready in three years. I haven't heard anything from VW about their uh, self-driving programs. Uh, let's see. Tesla has done it. And there's a video of them um, releasing, like, it predicted a crash way before it was going to happen. Um... They, there's some truck trucking companies that have done it, like are testing it. Uh, Google's it, doing it, it. Yeah, Google's doing it. Um, Google got to be on that forefront for everything. Yeah. Uh, so there's a number of companies that are that are starting it and going through the testing phase. And I think, I think honestly, it's the future. Like, if there's a lane like there's a like we have the carpool lane if the carpool lane is used for that purpose yeah um uh, for just auto uh automated cars that would be cool that way it's it's less traffic that nobody has to worry about it just in case you know uh because human error is a very big thing uh but if if it just becomes more uh not company uh Uh, I had the word and I lost it. If it becomes more, if it becomes more accepted, but the industry accepted. There we go, industry. Um, 
way of thinking, it will change how we know us driving as as we know it. Like this seat can go 180, and the the wheel can detach. Like, well, which the, is a great anti, which is a great anti theft de- device, I might add. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: is you also have to think about the safety of it. So. Um, I've been watching a couple videos on it, and I've been uh, listening to kind of what they were saying is, when the wheel goes in, what happens if you do need driver assistance? What if the uh, wheel gets stuck? That's true. Like, that's definitely going to have to be something that... Uh, what about people possibly, like, getting into the Wi-Fi of the car and changing the code so it does something it's not supposed to? Um, that's that's something I think should be a good a good fear. Uh, it's just what about if you turn 180 degrees how fast can you turn it back what if there's something that's going to happen you don't know the only thing that I could do is it could probably warn you to try to turn the seat around fast enough and pop it out but that's a minimum of reducing your reaction time to something that's happening around you yeah by at, uh, at least a second what I I personally feel like if it's in driving mode the wheel should not be able to disconnect and the seat should not be able to turn if it's driving. Yeah, and that's the thing is what they were saying is the wheel, when you set it into automatic drive, the wheel comes forward into the dashboard and the seat can be turned around while driving so you can talk to the people. Now, I do like this. I do like the fact that the passenger side can turn around. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because they're not driving. (laughs) But... And then when it comes to self-driving vehicles, does that mean that when all these newer self-driving vehicles come about, does that mean all the people who um, have never driven before, do they still need to take driving tests? Yes. I I fully believe that automated driving is the way of the future. I still believe that we still need to have licenses and obviously insurance and the, the ability to override, to humanly take control of the vehicle. So, if, that, in case. Yeah, if that's the case, then what if a car is in automatic drive and it hits another vehicle that's in automatic drive? Whose fault is it? That's another thing that I, that's a bridge we're going to have to cross when it happens. Because uh, it's not the, your the, fault, it's not their fault. That's uh, a software that's... programming, so does that mean that the, uh... The company is at fault? Does, do the insurance company just pay for both cars to get fixed? Like, that's that's a bridge we haven't crossed yet. The only accident that's happened with an automated car has been a driver's fault, oddly enough. Yeah, and, uh... <laughs> I know Uber was also doing their own automated driving. They got kicked out of San Francisco. Did they? Yes, they did, because after, um, about two hours after they started releasing their own self-driving vehicles, they got reports of them running red lights. They started checking, uh, people were coming back and checking the programming and getting video footage, and a lot of them were running a lot of red lights. Oh, shit. Just going right through. So San Francisco said they needed a permit to do this, and they can only do it in certain spots, and, uh... Basically, Uber was like, no, no, we're going to go to Arizona. And Arizona's like, yeah, come over here. Don't worry. You can kill all the people you want. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, like, honestly, to test it out in San Francisco, one driving in San Francisco is, if you've never done it, is the stupidest thing you could ever fucking do. Um, Yeah. uh, Because getting around San Francisco is crazy. Uh, But it's also so heavily populated that... That's a dumb choice to start it. That is the worst place. Like that's like doing it in New York City. You know something bad is going to happen. Well, yeah, but uh, it, it just shows like because the Google cars have been on the road for two years, but before they were yeah. on the road for two years, they were in their own practice facilities for a solid two years. Yeah, which makes sense. Like you can't just make this and go. You have to do it. And incremental steps. And Google, I don't think Google has taken them to a heavily populated 
area, like San Francisco, Dallas, Seattle, uh, New York uh, examples, uh, Miami, um, just so I can cover every base. Uh, but it's more highways and stuff that Google's working with, if I'm not mistaken, which makes sense, which, in all honesty, automated driving should be used for freeway, not city. Uh, um, that's where, where my opinion comes in, is... Yeah, currently they are in uh, Kirkland, Washington, Mountain View, California, Metro Phoenix... Arizona and uh, Austin, Texas are where they are putting around in right now for the Google vehicles. And Austin's pretty spread out. Like, that's the most densely populated area I could think of. Mountain View is not too bad. Mountain View is a small little area. Yeah. It's an upscale. So, it's also that's Google's home area. Like, if something goes wrong, they're going to be like, shit, we got to go drive there really quick. Yeah, they're like, hold <laughs> on, let me let me just go grab that real quick. Let's just go grab it. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, it's a cool idea. I like the design, but there's a lot of problems that need to be addressed. Like, I watched a couple videos with the Google one, and the Google's programming is really, really good. It actually takes into account hand signals, so on and so forth, red, uh, stop signs, train tracks, pretty much uh, anything that is going to happen. But here's another thing is, I don't know how much, like, bad weather work they did. So, yeah. what happens if raindrops get on the sensors? What happens if it gets into the electronics? Um... Well, for, for Mountain View, this this would be, this, this past couple of weeks would have been, because back to the rain, would be the time to test it. And then I think Texas is getting really good storms right now, too, to, to get that. Well, yeah, but, but I can't... Are, are the raindrops going to mess with the sensors? Are they going to kind of skew the vision of the sensor so it can't quite pick up on things quite as well uh, um, the other the other thing I could think of is since this was in a closed track for two years I can't help but think that they've tested it a little bit they probably like, have but I, I still feel like a sensor can mess up and uh, yeah I, I think when it comes to self-driving cars we're probably going to need a set of two to three sensors per, or per, uh, per side of the vehicle being driven yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, uh, it's scary new technology. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's nice to see because oh, yeah. it can take out, like, it can take out driver error. Like, if you're if you're sleepy and you're driving, let's say you're going to TwitchCon and Long Beach this year, and you're driving from Seattle to there, uh on the freeway you can switch it into automotive or auto mode like and like kind of gather yourself while looking on your phone to find a hotel to crash at wow i said that while driving like you know yeah not 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 crash into crash sleep at yeah that you can <laughs> that you can stop and you can rest at for when you're tired yeah. if you're if you're drunk, you can still take your own vehicle home. You don't have to take a cab, so you're not paying the cab fare. Or it, an Uber it, or a yeah. Lyft. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense why this is a great technology that we need, but it's definitely a technology that we need to look further into before everybody starts accepting it as, yes, this is what needs to happen right now. Yeah, and that's why I think three years out for the VW bus is a good, like, starter for like just like the the early 4k adopters the early auto automated driving starters is a good starting point to like ease it into the public yeah uh, and three years is a lot of time to test a lot of a lot of things it is but like i said we haven't heard much from vw so we don't know how far they are along they haven't said how much testing they've done they haven't said where they've done their testing they haven't said what kind of sensors are going to be on the vehicle yeah so i i get it. it's a concept car it's kind of just the hey this is this might happen and i do also yeah. understand that um after their whole vw after their whole debacle um with the diesel or yeah. tdi vehicles that a part of their contract was that they had to start promoting electric vehicles Mm -hmm. um, so that makes sense why they're trying to 
like generate buzz like this, which this may or may not come into flourishing, which would make me really sad because I do feel like a micro bus needs to kind of come back. Uh, I really enjoyed the first ones. I actually, one of the first cars I wanted was a uh, <laughs> like 1970, 1960 Beetle because I thought they looked really nice and you could do a lot with them and everything was bolted together. But that's neither here nor there. Um, you could drop a Porsche engine in it. Yeah, you could literally do, you could drop a Hayabusa engine in it and it literally bolts together. Um, yeah. But when it comes to like electric cars, I, I do feel like this is one of those necessary steps that needs to happen. I feel like, especially because the U.S., uh, they actually give a $7,500 rebate for electric cars. So there's an incentive yeah. to start going towards more electric vehicles. Which and is, you get auto carpool lane, even if you're by yourself, which yeah. in California is a goddamn godsend. Well, and I mean, that's also <laughs> the thing is, uh, like, when it came to that lane of uh, self-driving, uh, when, it, when it comes to, like, self-driving vehicles, there is no carpool lane <laughs> in most European countries. There's no, there's yeah. no need for it. So, yeah. like, the U.S. is one of the few countries that does have a carpool lane. So it makes sense for us to look at it and go, well, we can have our own lane for this. But you look at, like, smaller countries and stuff like that that don't have carpool lanes. Then they're cutting out a section of their own highway that is already there. Or they're having to expand even further on their highway, which they may not yeah. have the space for, to I, put I in mean, a lane for all... this. But, yeah. I, I, that, that that was more of me, like, strictly thinking U.S.-wise, yep. which, if that's the case, that's a simple programming change. Um, well, okay, I say simple in terms of, like, overall, but... It's still programming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Let's it's still honest. programming, and it's, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but overall, like, okay, the U.S. has this software. Germany has the Autobahn, which has no only has a minimum speed, not a maximum speed. It has this software. Um, yeah, and I mean, the uh, the VW bus is limited to 99 miles an hour. Yeah. Which, uh, if you're going 100 miles an hour on a U.S. freeway, it's the dead of night, and nobody really cares. <laughs> so, uh, I think another good thing to also look at it is... Uh, EF1, or it's Formula E or something like that. It's mm -hmm. the new Formula Racing, but they use electric engines. Oh, wow. So they're not as fast as Formula 1 cars, and they don't run as long, but mm -hmm. if that's kind of going to be the new thing, then uh, what's going to happen to like, performance vehicles? Are we going to start switching over to electric cars? And now that we're switching over to electric cars, does that mean that there's going to be specially designed cars without the self-driving for performance and uh, racing vehicles? Or Yeah, I feel like I feel like with automated driving, it's going to be a um, a very switch-based system. Like, you can turn it on and off. I don't think it should be just standard automotive drive than human driving i don't think it should ever be that i think it should always be this option that you turn on now if we were to do it that way then it wouldn't also kind of cut out the reasoning for the automatic drive because the automatic drive is to get rid of the human error but if it uh, starts in driver then there's always going to be that human error. So it's and, it, it's kind of this weird battle back and forth between which is better for which. I think early wise, it should be human than computer. And as things as we get more adoptive of it, and it gets more uh, integrated into vehicles and lives and whatnot, then it can start making that shift over. But it's got to start driver than computer, I feel like. Because it's what we know. No. It's what we're safe with and unsure about. Okay. Um, also, uh, back to the Uber thing. Uber uh, being kicked out of San Francisco. They blamed it on human error, even though there was no human to be behind the wheel at the time. Well, I mean, that would be a programming error. Yeah. So it would still fall to a human. Yeah. 
Jeff from programming fucked up. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, this uh, I feel like this debate could probably go on and on and on and on and on because there's questions about everything. Yeah. But I think it's time to move on to uh, Disney Esports and ESPN. Disney ESPN Esports because Disney owns ES- ESPN. Um, ESPN is on the decline, which is because most people are cutting the cord. Like more and more people are just going to Netflix, Hulu, and online to watch television and sports and whatnot. Uh, so I think with what they're doing, like, they broadcasted Evo last year. Um, like, only one day, I think. But overall, it was the fight. They broadcasted the finals for Street Fighter. Uh, they did the... I think they did the Invitational. Mm-hmm. Or the International... Uh, is it the international or the invitational? International. Dota two. Um, uh, they've done league tournaments. I think they're doing smite tournaments. Like, it's a smart move for them to get into esports because it's now a rising competitor. And let's face it, ESPN two has been the bastard child with like, let's show a spelling bee, let's show cup stacking. Let show. Yeah, it was like, like uh, what what weird thing can we put on there? Because we're not sure what we need to do anymore. Yeah, um, let's put on World Series of Poker. Like, and what I find uh, hilarious is people going, um, "This isn't sport," but like, don't argue against the spelling bee. <laughs> It's it's funny, like those who don't know, mm-hmm. those who think just playing a computer game is just playing a computer game, or a console game, or what have you, isn't a lot of thought. Fucking people put in like sixteen hour days of just playing one game and getting better at it. Well, not only that, but it's a lot of them. It's uh. It's a sport, but not in the way that, like, it's not physical. It's all mental. It's all keeping your mind at top condition. So, like, a lot of people, they have their own training schedules where they uh, eat well. They make sure that they have a good sleep schedule. They, uh, they make sure that they're not doing things to hurt their chances of reducing, like, their reaction times and their memorization of stuff and so on and so forth but you see these you still get like these same people who go well why would you watch somebody play this game if you could play it yourself that's not yeah i could go i could go out and play fucking football too but i can you know watch people play it (laughs) yeah i'm not six foot three and 250 pounds so i can't be competitive at football and i may not have the greatest reaction time such as the people who play these esports like Twitch-based esports. You need fantastic reaction times, but you can train your reaction time to get better. But you may not have that level. Yeah. It's very much a a fucking... It's a thing. And it's a work... Like, watch some StarCraft II gameplay. Like, the micromanaging level that those people do is insane. Like... To have your APM up that high, to, to keep your brain going, okay, these 10 things need to mine my crystal, and at 20 seconds, I need to build this in order to get this started to do this strategy against these people, while maintaining going, I need to scout, I need to build forces, upgrades, move out, and then micromanage a giant battle takes a lot of fucking mental power. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of work that needs to go into these things. And when it kind of gets belittled because it's not a physical sport, it's yeah. kind of annoying. But I can understand why, like, especially with older audiences, tend to see it. And I'm not, like, it seems like the older generation is a little bit more accepting of it than kind of, like, the mid 40s to 30s generation 
yeah. or like later 30s, mid 40s to like mid 50s. It's kind of that generation that doesn't really quite understand it. Yeah. And it's like, if you look at, uh, it, they didn't really have anything. They were all physical. Like, I was, I'm a naturally big person. I've always been big. I could run out and do sports, and I played football. I was active as a kid, mm-hmm. but I will still go play video games, and I still maintain the same size. No matter, I could be outside playing for 12 hours a day. And not lose a single fucking pound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're all physical. And it's... If you look at parents... Like, if you look at... There's me. There's my potential children. Uh, and then my parents... Uh, my parents are the ones like, in that age group that, like... Oh, kids don't get out enough. Kids don't do... Like... XYZ enough but they facilitated me us by getting us the game systems and everything to stay inside and we've cultivated this culture of staying inside but being social and active like it's this weird mixture (laughs) yeah I don't want to like force like I don't want to say it's per se, that our previous generations fall for the reason we are. I think it's just more of... There's always a generational difference between the generation before and the generation after, that they don't quite understand what the generation before them did, and the generation after doesn't quite understand what the generation is doing. So, when it comes to, like, ESPN, (sighs) yes, they're dying when it comes to the uh, cable section because cable is a last generation thing so last generation isn't quite keeping up with the newer generation which the newer generation is moving on to predominantly online and when you move to online from say the TV to say computer there's going to be that gap between the two so eSports yeah. say if uh, ESPN because I know they have a lot of subscriptions on uh, on just eSports mm-hmm. through their online services it makes sense because that's where a lot of people who are going to be getting into it are going to be at most people who play uh, games on like console and stuff are not going to go back to a uh, a TV to try to watch another video game being played. They're probably yeah. going to go to like a tablet or a phone or something like that that can actually go onto the internet and find ESPN or find Twitch or something uh, so that they can uh, what's it called so that they can watch the games that they want and they have the choice yeah. because that's what esports is kind of about esports is about having your own choices and things whereas with tv it's very set in a schedule everything is set so 10 it, minutes of tv 30 minutes of, like 20 minutes of a show 10 minutes of commercials and like on twitch we don't get the commercials like if, if you're not partnered you get maybe an opening one depending on your area and then you don't get an ad but you get all the interaction you need. Yeah. Uh, watching like a, a league tournament or any tournament, like yes, there's sponsor moments and sometimes they will run ads, but more often than not, you're watching commentary and gameplay and we get more, this generation with us moving to online gets more content to ad ratio than cable does and it's impressive yeah um we we like for let's see on twitch if you're partnered you can run three minutes of ads every two hours i believe or every hour 
I think I I I I uh, stream on a partnered stream for a little bit, so I know that. And for an hour, for three minutes, now watching an hour of TV, that's ten times as much commercial time that I'm going to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, you get less content for commercial. Yeah. And I can't honestly tell you the last time I... I have a cable box. It's in my shed in the backyard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hook it up. We don't watch TV. We watch Hulu. We watch Netflix. We watch, like, I watch Twitch primarily. Uh, YouTube. Um, uh, questionable things. Um, but overall, it's... <sighs> Switching to online is better. In my opinion, uh, you're because you can give the people what they want. You have on-demand stuff. You have, yeah. uh, you have the uh, choice enough. to choose. Yeah, like I've watched the Super Bowl the last, and I don't watch football. I literally just watch mainly the Super Bowl if it's a team that I feel like watching, mm -hmm. or the commercials. Uh, I watch it online. I've streamed it the uh, the last what this will be the third year they're offering it from nbc yeah i've watched it all three years streaming to support it uh even if i'm not really paying attention it's still one view there that's supporting this uh um like uh companies are now able to rent out coliseums for league and hearthstone and yeah it's it, drawing in people like yeah they'll sell out it's ridiculous yeah when the prize pool is over a million dollars you're gonna have to start rethinking things yeah like coca-cola is getting involved i think pepsi's finally getting involved i big companies are finally realizing that this mental game that people play uh, like Twitch shooters, you play CS:GO. I don't. Like, I I can play CS:GO. I could probably get mad at it. Uh, I'm better at like Overwatch, in my opinion, or strategy games. Like, if strategy games, like, God help me, if Civ ever had like a tournament-based system. Oh, good lord. I feel like that would be a lot more fun for me. But like XCOM 2, where it's a quick, quick game. But like. Uh, a long time ago, a few years ago, no, ago, uh, there was a guy, Crumps 2, who did the Binding of Isaac racing league, um, where people would race on Isaac, uh, speedrunners race, like, there, anything can be a sport when it comes to PC in some, some cases. Yeah, anything can be competitive. Anything can be competitive if it has the ability. Like, I don't think Civ will ever be super competitive. That's just an no. example. But XCOM, yes, because you could do quick matches. Yeah. No. Um, like a two v two team base uh, XCOM game. Yeah. Or like a one v one X or competitive. Or even if like you were to do a four team. So, like, there's, say, four people on each team. Each team has their own squad. So, yeah. you, you now need to think about what your squad's going to do, where the best positions are, how to remove positions for the other team, the best way to slow a team of, down, so on and so forth. Slow but, a team down, line of sight, like, do you want a sniper? Do you want a heavy person? Do you want to, like, I've played a few online games. Some people sink all of their points into, like, a single unit. Uh, do you want to spread it out and have like a, a massive squad of really shitty people, but it takes those people longer to get down? Yeah. Uh, do you want an alien on your squad? Like, um, and then in turn, there's there's speed running where like uh, Meat Boy or uh, Isaac or. Um, Dust. Dust. Trials. Uh, trials. Like yeah. Uh, 
like depth can be a game that you could play competitively. Oh yeah. Uh, I've always um, wanted competitive depth. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just looking at Chivalry, For Honor, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I honestly don't know why Siege doesn't have a competitive thing. Uh, they're trying uh, to. Basically, the only thing with Siege is that their net graph is really weird. So you get a lot of like um, people stop shooting. They're already turning the corner, and then they get headshotted. Ah. Uh, or they'll headshot uh, somebody. Ta World of Tanks and Warships have a competitive league, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. It's not. It's not big, but it's there. Uh, Duck Game could be one. Boss Monster, which is a card game. It, a card game, a set card game, not like Hearthstone or Magic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a possibility, uh, and that could be up to four players. Um, RPGs really don't have a thing. Uh, some strategy games, like we were talking about XCOM. Yeah, uh, I mean S RPGs S can still be S ran through. They can be SOTF has a huge one. Yeah, SOTF has a million dollar prize pool, and it's just Ark. Yeah, combat, which is potato in of itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hell, you can the Nintendo Championships. How fast can you beat Mario, Tetris, and etc.? Like, it's an endless possibility. Oh yeah, no, there can be a. Essentially, if there's a game you like, it can somehow be turned competitive. Yeah. Uh. Within reason. Yeah. <laughs> there are some things that can't. But, like, most most games that have a co-op or multiplayer function can be turned competitive in some way, shape, or form. I mean, let's be honest here. You could probably do, like, speed runs for dating sims. Oh, yeah. Like, that'd be weird. Yeah, any, <laughs> any game that's out there, you can turn competitive in one way or another, and it usually turns out to be speed running it. But... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's... It, it's an endless, boundless market that needs to be tapped. Yeah. Um, so I think ESPN is starting that with the highly competitive games. Like, oh, I still need to do my league placement for this season. Oh, God. Don't talk to me. <sighs> That's going to be depressing. <laughs> okay. Um... So I think moving on swiftly, we'll start the uh, game review portion. Uh, yeah. This week's we did Random Excess Murder. Uh, then we did No Seat. Which these are... Um, every one of these games that we reviewed, we purchased ourselves. And we are speaking it like we feel it. Um, no reason not to. It's a little asinine too. Boy. To cover yourself and be like, this game is great. Yeah, so... Sarcasm. Yeah, complete, full disclosure. Anything we say is our own true opinion. We were not paid for any of these. And, uh... So, yeah. Um, so let's start with Random Excess Game or... or uh, Random Excess Murder, which is also known as Ram. Uh, let me read the first part. Or about this game first before we do anything. Uh, Ram is a first-person arena shooter with unique, uh, or with a unique look and fast-paced action. Play online against your friends or enemies across five arenas and or with nine different weapons in the game uh, that won't hurt your opponents, but will leak memory, causing different glitches and bugs to uh, their screens. So. To start this off, unfortunately, I'm going to have to start this off on a bad note. Uh, there's only four arenas, and there's only seven weapons. And it looks like the game has the game had been updated since August? No. So the game came out, and the day after it came out, uh, they released a patch fixing a few things. Um, so to start this off, let me throw a... Bam. Uh, so this is the main menu very basic main menu you got the uh five different colors up top blue red green yellow and purple each one of those will dictate what color your weapons are what color your uh the weapon you sh or what 
color your projectile is going to be, so on and so forth. It's basically just a uh, a general uh, overlay. Yeah. Uh, so this game is also a three dollar game, so we're, it's not expecting too much of a uh, large. I would say large large base yeah also uh looking at the same page it only has six reviews yeah not <laughs> a lot of, not a lot of people have played this game and they're actually not the best um so the next screenshot i'm going to go on to is the options menu there is resolution full screen yes or no apply and back there is nothing else on there there's no audio sliders there's no graphic sliders um <coughs> Which is fine. Honestly, the graphics in this game are at that point to where they're passable, and uh, it, for whatever it, for whatever it is. Yeah, this its graphical style works for the game. Um, yeah, it, it's very, very, very bare bones. Um, uh, I would like at least an audio slider. No. Yeah, um, something able, like that, able. because the <laughs> second you load this up. You better turn it down because it will destroy your ears. We were talking about the THX. <laughs> yeah, this is THX 2.0. Um, uh, hopefully, you're not. You don't have your headphones on the second you start it up because I rip headphone users. Yeah, I've been using the music from this game in the background, and this is at I want to say 25% audio, and that's still decreased volume. So that yeah. I can be heard more than, uh, than it. More than it. So, uh, let's go on to, there are, uh, seven, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. You said seven weapons. Yeah, seven weapons in the game currently, so let's go ahead and do a quick run over those. Uh, you got the basic uh, I... SMG that you always start in the right hand, um, no aim down sights. It actually, it starts off quick firing and then reduces in uh, rate of fire as you hold down the trigger. It also has a recoil function that pushes you backwards. Uh, yeah, not my favorite thing about the game. But I'm an it, SMG it, nonetheless. Yeah, it makes kind of uh, it makes a bit of sense and also allows you to maneuver the uh, area a little bit better because if you look directly mm -hmm. down at the beginning of your jump it'll increase your speed as you're flying upwards to allow you to get onto certain platforms a little bit easier uh, then you get the rubber band gun the rubber band gun is a moderately quick firing uh, weapon that does a bit of damage not too terribly much but it also reduces ram by quite a uh, your ram bar down there at the bottom by quite mm -hmm. a bit uh, you increase your RAM by shooting other players and you re uh, reduce RAM by being shot at. The When you reach zero RAM, different little uh, bug effects occur. And we'll start getting to weapons that do bug effects but don't reduce or don't do damage and reduce RAM. So the shotgun, uh, it reduces RAM by quite a significant amount, but it's a very slow firing weapon and it only shoots three vertical pellets. Yeah, vertical, not horizontal. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, like, I just don't... I, I don't know why that was the design. Uh, each secondary weapon has its own aim down sights. They're usually not very good. Mm. Um, also, so, why, like a shotgun aim down sights is just weird sometimes. Especially yeah, this, if it's just vertical. Yeah, this game like, doesn't need aim down sights. Its shots are perfectly accurate right down the center for the most part. Um, yeah, yeah. They're, slight, they're actually slightly off to the right, but it's not going to affect anything except for at really long distances. Uh, next up is the grenade launcher. Uh, the grenade launcher stuns, doesn't do any uh, doesn't do any damage. Basically what it does is it does a really weird particle effect across the screen where it just makes it hard to see. Uh, basically mm -hmm. kind of digitizes everything and makes it really, really blocky. Um, moderately fast firing does no damage, but you can very quickly blind yourself by accident. Um, after that is a sniper rifle. The sniper rifle does a little bit of damage, but mainly what it does is it re it uh, it basically sends a fake pop up ad into the game mm. and forces you to click out of that before you can continue maneuvering and fighting. 
after that, we go on to the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher digitizes uh, your screen, turning it into different code. So everything's a little yeah. bit harder to see um, for a short period of time. Reloads relatively quickly, does no external da or extra damage, but it allows you to uh, guarantee a hit on somebody when you're trying to make sure they can't see. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was that the ooh, da, 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 the rubber band gun actually uh, when you get hit all the way down you use the rubber band gun it forces you into basically a Windows 95 screen uh, and you have to re-click on the little RAM symbol at the bottom uh, to pull the game back up. Hmm. So once you reach zero RAM and get shot again, it does a myriad of different things. Pop-ups start happening. Um, other sort of like little things can continue to happen to you and it basically just makes it uh, harder for you to play. Um, so the guns are all relatively uh, unique. They do their own special thing, making this actually quite a pretty cool design for a game so far that I enjoy. Um, so let's go on to the map designs. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is a map called Synth. <coughs> uh, Synth, as you can see. The layout's nice. Yeah, Synth, as you can see, is basically a bunch of platforms with a uh, bunch of bridge wages, or bridgeways that lead to each uh, section. Uh, this one, I can see where the uh, pushing back from the submachine gun can make this map a little bit more treacherous than what it needs to be. Um, basically this is designed to force you into very small, very quick combat zones, forcing you to jump from one platform to another, making it so that you can uh, go through different areas faster and faster, and hopefully creating very quick and small engagements. Um, also not a, lot of, not a lot of spaces to hide in. No, definitely not. This game is not designed for you to be able to hide around corners. Um, yeah. There's not too terribly much to talk about with this. You can basically see the entire map from this one point of view. Um, and this game is not a very good game for long distance fighting. Uh, bullets have a lot of drop off and um, not really... Uh, too terribly really much. Really no, it, it's yeah. just it's it's more worth getting up in somebody's face and basically just dodging left and right and kind of jumping around and keeping yourself moving. Yeah. Uh, the next map I'm going to show you is it's, it's like Quake. Yeah, Quake, it's, you always want to be moving. Yeah, this this game is very remnant of Quake. Uh, the next map we're going to go on to is called Neo Tokyo. Um, this one is actually probably one of my least favorite maps of the game, um, only because. It forces you onto three different platforms. I'm standing on the first platform in this image, and you can see there are the two, the orange and the blue platform. Mm -hmm. Each platform on these is relatively small, but it's very, like, it's kind of an odd vertical size. Um, it forces you into very weird, out-of-place engagements with a lot of pitfalls. That makes yeah. it very easy to lose track of yourself and fall off the edge. Um, this map is mainly traversed by use of teleporters. Um, teleporters are not my favorite because it reduces lines of sight and it, I don't know, they're just, they don't make for a fluid, uh, map design for me, in my own personal opinion. And that's fair, like, I, I can agree with that. Uh, uh like, they're useful, like, in TF2 or Overwatch with Symmetra or Engineer, like, they have their uses to, like, get back into the battle quickly. But overall, as a design aesthetic for a map, it's not the best. No. It's a, a thing of the past. Yeah, it allows for very, like, annoying maneuvers where basically you just constantly run back and forth between a teleporter. Uh, basically stalling an engagement for a long period of time. Um, yeah. My fav actually, probably my favorite part of this map is the blue area. Because as you can see, it's very much a pit. Uh, you, you can start battling from the pit, from inside to outside, from outside to inside. Everything is very compact. It keeps everything fluent moving. And basically, as long as you can run in some sort of a circle, you're never going to get caught anywhere. 
Yeah. And you, a lot of the jumping will allow you to jump from uh, flat surfaces to an angled surface to allow you to get up to the next surface. Um, so you don't really have to worry about getting stuck too much. So a lot of this is going to be a lot of maneuvering, jumping, vertical movements of up and down, left and right. Uh, this is probably my favorite area, and there's current. There's only two teleporters on this one, just like on the, uh, the other ones. But you can mm -hmm. see much more of the map from every angle, or much more of this area from <laughs> every angle. Yeah. Um, and moving on to the, uh, the yellow section. The yellow section is uh, another top of a skyscraper. It's a helipad. And this is the most probably bare bones one they made. It's not very creative in my own personal opinion. There's a lot of really odd wall choices to keep everybody pushed off to the side and force very odd engagements. Yeah. Like I don't really see the design choice in this specific part of the map. There's actually more cover than I thought there would be. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just... In a game where it's like Quake, uh, reminiscent of Unreal Quake shooters, uh, cover isn't something you need. No. This is... Um, it's a lot of vertical, and it's a lot of very straight-on fights or being shot from above. and Yeah, and then, like, the other thing I don't like about this stage is the amount, like, all the lights of the, the quote-unquote lights of the skyscrapers, it's super distracting. Yeah, all the uh, background lights. Although, yeah. on this one it makes sense because it's Neo-Tokyo, so you're supposed to be in a very skyscraper -y, uh, area and the lights kind of add yeah. to the aesthetic. But uh, a kind of cool thing about this map, though, is that they did a lot of like little Easter eggs here and there. Like, you see, you can see uh, CJV on the, fir or on the uh, second yellow... Uh, mm -hmm. screen, the helipad. Um, another one VR. you can... Yeah. Another one you can see if you continue going through is Cool Brands. My favorite one. <laughs> uh, cool Brand. Yeah, that's... That's the best brand. Cool oh, yeah. Brand. Yeah. And there's I'm a couple other ones. Yeah, if if I could read Japanese, I'd. those are probably all other little jokes here and there or other companies then you see the uh ohm symbol i wonder if that's a nod to ohm it might be it might be i don't know yeah, yeah like it's very very likely you don't use that that's also yeah. a libra symbol which could also be that yeah but that, <laughs> it's kind of funny um and then moving on to the next one the next one is called block fort block fort is probably my favorite map of the game it's it's very reminiscent of like an unreal tournament style map there's long lines of sight there's short lines of sight there's um there's a lot of different little spots that you can kind of use and abuse like corner jumping and so on and so forth and my favorite thing about it is actually each one of the bridges that connects uh on the top as you can see those pink bridges mm-hmm um, they disappear at distance. Hmm. So you can't really see them 100% all the way through the map. So it's it's generally pretty cool. I enjoy the look of that. It, it's very, very 80s-esque. <laughs> and that's kind of what this design choice is. Is It's more of like an 80s styling. That's why all, there's these, all these lights are neon. Every, like, you can look at the background. It's purples and pinks and everything is bright and flashy and in your face it's, um, it's 80s uh, Tron 80s Tron yeah it's very 80s uh, esque and like even the background music the background uh, the music is made by Carl Flodden which is what's been playing this entire podcast in the background it's very 80s everything about yeah. this is very very 80s it's meant to nod at that time period of when everything was kind of crazy and just being thrown around and lights and everything was bright and colorful and meant to be in your face all the time. Mm -hmm. It it reminds me of kind of like a 3D-esque uh, Hotline Miami. Um, but anyways. Or uh, Far Cry Blood Bowl. Or Far, Far Cry Blood Dragon? Blood Dragon. Yeah. Um... So going through here, there's uh, about three different levels that you can play on this, or three different uh, like levels of the map. 
there's top, middle, and bottom. Bottom is going to have your tight corridor fights. Middle is going to have your very close um, or your mid-range fight. The top level is going to have your longer distance fights. Uh, the top level is also where you're going to find most of the weapons in this map. Um, when you get down to the bottom level, the bottom level is more or less corridor, really tight and close. Um, kind of forcing you into these engagements, but allowing you to jump back and get around a corner relatively quickly for cover when you need it and jumping back out when uh, you're ready to re-engage. Um, I really enjoyed the aesthetics of this level. I think this level looks really good. There's no pitfalls through it, so when you are jumping around, you're not... Um, you're not having to worry about if you're going to jump off the edge. Um, yeah. Going through. And then on the edge of the map, you can actually see these <coughs> dividers that's supposed to signal the edge of the map. It, And I say supposed to. <laughs> because you can walk right the fuck through them. <laughs> no, I'm solid. Oh. No, they're solid when you walk along them, but if you walk along them to an intersection point, you can walk right through the intersection point. Ah. Now, I found that a lot in this map. In this map, you can use and abuse a lot of these uh, boundaries and walls, where if you walk along them and take a sharp turn on a corner, you can walk right through the corner. So, um, the images I'm showing up now are me being outside of the map, looking in towards the boundary that I was just looking at. <laughs> from different angles on different sides to prove that I am out actually outside of the map. And there's no kill screen or no kill wall. No, there's no kill wall. You can walk to the sun and the sun just despawns. <laughs> um, so there's the corner again that I was just at, uh, just to prove that that is a corner. It's supposed to be the edge of the map. Now, if you walk directly into the corner without walking along the wall, it'll stop you every time. But as long as you're walking on the wall, you can go right through the other wall. Um, Jeez. Yeah, this next one is me being inside of the yellow tower. And to do this, you literally walk across the wall, and you turn on to the, or you turn into that little intersection on one of the ramps. I mean, you can actually see right here on the red one. There's the two ramps that go up, yeah. and you can literally walk across the wall, and you take a sharp right turn directly into that corner section, and you go right through it. <laughs> Now, what's really annoying is each one of these walls is rendered in the game as a wall on one side. Jeez. So, you can... Uh, what's it called? You can go right through that wall and you can shoot outside of the wall, but they can't shoot you in the wall. So, it's a, it's the, the out-of-bounds kills. Yes. Yeah, it's very much using and abusing the uh, out of bounds firing systems of this game. Yeah. Now, mind you, it's easy enough for them to come back through and to get underneath the walls and get outside of it and fight you on your own terms. But if you don't know how they did it, mm. or you can't, you haven't figured it out yet, or you haven't seen it, and you're just dying from something that's under the ground or in a building, then you can't do anything. You're, you're stuck. Yeah. You're kind of SOL. Yeah. Um, so it, it just... It kind of makes stuff like that a little bit unfair. But this is all just minor problems that can be fixed relatively quickly. It's just clipping problems and how the game renders corners. And but I then again, it, you say fixed quickly, but then again, the game hasn't been updated since the release. It hasn't, but it was released in 2016. Now... Yes. Um, and it was relatively later, 2016. Well, it was August, but that's six months. Yeah. That's, that's my issue. And that's fine, but it, we'll get to that towards the end. Yeah. Um, most of these, I believe it's the lights, like the lighting around the edges is what's causing these clipping problems. Mm. Um, so as I keep going through, you can see all the spots that I am able to get into and, uh, show from Out being of. under the, uh, map. Yeah. This next image is me actually being outside or out of the bounds, walking backwards, so you can see the entire map. I should not be able to see this much of the map at any given time. <laughs> um, I do like the look of the palm trees, the digitized, like very '80s digitized palm trees. Looks really aesthetically yeah. pleasing to me. <laughs> um, I think the sun's a bit too bright, but I love the palm palm trees. Yeah, 
the the sun is a little bright, but that's just AD styling. The sun is always super bright. So these are kind yeah. of the four sides of the uh, map, viewing from each corner. Um, all in all, it's still my favorite map, even though it's broken. I like the design of it. I think the design of this map was very well made. It's very basic, and it works really well for this uh, game type, or for this game, and the way that it plays, because it's very Unreal-esque. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the final one, or the final map, called Tower. Tower looks really good. It, it It's very aesthetically pleasing to me. I, I believe it's one of the better looking maps. Um, I, I like kind of the out in space, definitely a digital era uh, type map. Yeah. But it's far too vertical. There are uh, four layers. There's the yellow, green, purple, and the blue layer. Oops. Which is the bottom layer. Yeah, the bottom layer. And you can't get any higher in the map without going all the way down to the bottom level and taking the teleporter back up to the top. Ugh. Yeah, it's one of those maps again. Um, I don't know why this was the kind of running theme for it, but there's no real engagement areas in this. There's nowhere that forces you kind of into an engagement area. You can more or less just kind of jump, and continuously jump from top to the bottom and take a teleporter back up and just kind of keep running that circuit over and over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Now, I understand that most of the weapons are supposed to be the... Uh, fighting boxes you're supposed to fight over the weapons but I, I I don't see that being the case it's very oblong and the weapons are out of the way they're not really centered they're not kind of forced or they're not trying to push you in that situation of forcing you in uh, into these uh, engagement areas yeah and it's a lot of very skinny walkways which means most of your maneuverability is going to be jumping up and down, forward and backwards to try and get around them. Which <laughs> doesn't give you much maneuverability, which kind of limits a uh, quite a bit about uh, your fighting styles. So, that being the, mu or the map's weapons, um, basically... Um, my few gripes with this game is uh, the left and right movements are a little too slow. Uh, if it's going to be an Unreal style of uh, game, I think that left and right strafing needs to be significantly faster than what it is. Yeah. Um, the options menu is far too limited. There needs to be more options. You need to be able to use graphical sliders, like turn down some of the uh, flares or the lens flares that's going on. Uh, you need to be able to turn down the audio. Because the music is <laughs> far too loud. Um, <laughs> even the weapons are really loud. Um, but they all kind of make this bubbly popping noise. So it's not like it's kind of an overly loud. loud. Yeah. Um, most of these maps have way too many death holes. You can fall through um, these open areas directly to your death. And that's not very fun. It doesn't make you want to jump around and get very much maneuverable. It tries to for, or it makes you kind of want to play back and uh, kind of sit. There's no bot room, so you can't really like practice. When I was kind of reviewing yeah. this, there was nobody online, so most of these I was kind of running around and figuring things out myself. Um, there's only actually like two or three tracks to this game, which makes sense. Mm. It's a three dollar game, but I'd be more than happy to pay $5 if this was the complete game with all five arenas, even, maybe even six arenas, all nine weapons, two or three more game tracks, um, and slightly better designed maps. I think the guns are designed really well. They work uh, really well with the game. The bullet travel is very nice. It's not There's no hit scan weapons. Yeah. Um, so you actually have to kind of... Um, figure out distances and time to travel and so on and so forth. Um, those are pretty much mostly like, and, and the weird little like holes that you can glitch through maps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the things I do like about this is I, the few songs that are in there, I love the songs. I think they're great. They work well with the game. They're very 80s-esque and they fit with uh, the theme of the game. 
Uh, it's a very fast-paced game. Any engagements you do get, uh, you do get into last for about thirty to forty seconds, and it's constant shooting. Yeah. It's constantly you trying to get a better maneuver on the other player. It's a lot of jumping around. You don't have to worry about like inaccuracies of your weapon. Everything is as it should be with an Unreal esque game. Mm -hmm. Um. The movement systems are actually really fluid when it comes to jumping, strafing, moving backwards, left, right, turning. Um, those are very, very well polished and very well uh, smooth. The original ideas of this game, like how weapons work, um, the different abilities, how your health bar is portrayed, I enjoy. I love, I love the way they did this. In such a weird and off way to try to make it so that everything is their own they try to yeah. make it they, they try to make it as kind of a joke and nod back to the er, or like the 80s and early computers and so on and so forth to kind of joke about itself more or less yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i get you and it's kind of it's a little bit of ironic humor, which I enjoy quite a lot. I, I like ironic humor. I, I, I just... It could have been more complete, like you said. It, it, yeah. It needs... It needs honesty. What I think is it needs polishing. It needs just general basic stuff that I feel like this was kind of more of, like, a pet project. Yeah. Um, that a very small developer made as kind of a show of, hey... We could do something like this, and we can do it cheaply. But even though it's cheap, it looks good. It looks great. Everything about this game, I didn't find any pixelizations. I never found any frame drops. Um, everything about this game is how it should be. You, you never looked at something, and it never seemed out of place. Everything about yeah. what they were doing here was very deliberate in the way that they were doing it. Um... It, it, it's very much an arcade style shooter if you're looking for some sort of um, overly competitive com uh, shooter this is not your game this is a game you load up with a bunch of friends and you have fun with like with the bots yeah yeah um, honestly I would probably give this game a six out of five or a uh, 6.5 <laughs> out of 10 <coughs> only because of the failings when it comes to the map, like the uh, yeah. clipping through. Um, I didn't really like half the map designs in it. Um, but everything I did enjoy about the game, I loved, absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. And everything I didn't like about it needs minor tweaks. Which is fair. And yeah. that's, that's reasonable. So that's why this gets a 6.5 out of 10. It um, works. Like, I mean, personally, I, I don't think I would enjoy this game. Like, I, I used to love arcade shooters, but I'm very much... Uh, I like... I don't like Call of Duty. Because there's the sense of... It's all about your KD. Uh, a KD ratio. And I'm very much a fan of like siege style, where or when we play three v three in Overwatch, it's one life. That's it. That's where you have that moment to shine. Yeah. Um, Cause my KD could be you know fucking killer, but if I can't win one round against five people, five on five, that's a problem. Well, it reminds me a lot of like. When you talk about KD, it reminds me a lot of playing. Let's go back to Call of Duty. Um, domination versus, uh, let's see here, um, Search and Destroy. So Search and Destroy was 5v5, one life, so on and so forth. Yeah. But when you went to Domination, a lot of people never played the objective, and their entire goal was to kill the people playing the objective to boost their KD. So that's why KD is flawed for me. Yeah, But when it comes to tactical shooters where you get one life, so on and so forth, it allows you to shine, but it doesn't make your stats as relevant. It doesn't, but it does take your skill into a higher account. Yeah. Because, like, 
Destiny, Call of Duty, anyone where we were talking about this with a friend of, uh, with my friend on Facebook. Nobody moves the payload. Nobody caps. Nobody like it's all about KD. Yeah. But in domination or I can't remember clash. No, not clash. Uh, whatever it's called in Destiny. Like if you take like you, the three points, if you take A and B or A and C or whatever and let them have one, you're going to win, and all you have to do is hold the two points. Or yeah. uh, the the Destiny game mode Rift, which is ridiculously fun, mm -hmm. uh, where you get the ball and you have to put it in the goal. Like, nobody does that. But, like, if that game mode is played fun, like, or game mode is played right, it's really fun. Yeah, um, and not just kill everybody and see how long we can get the match to go into a tie for. But uh, I I I like skill based shooters versus arcade based shooters personally. Yeah, which is fine. Except, a lot of people do. Which I'll play Overwatch and enjoy the fuck out of it. Which, by the way, I had a round yesterday where I got sixty one percent of the kills as Diva. Nice. I went like fucking monster mode. Yeah. All right. So, with uh, with ran out of the way at a six point five, mind you, on Steam it has nothing but negative reviews. <coughs> um, I don't think it's as bad as everybody says it is on Steam. I believe it could be very, very good. I just feel like the developers have been kind of shamed out of their own game. And don't feel like that they need to work on it anymore because everybody's going to see nothing but terrible, terrible reviews. And they just go, why bother? No one's going to play this game anyways. I feel like this game has a lot of potential. I feel like this game could be actually really fun. And if they did it right, could be somewhere close to the next Unreal Tournament. Uh, with that, I think we're going to call it on RAM and we're going to move on to the next uh, game review, which is No Seat. And the first picture says it all, boys and girls. Um, <laughs> oh, boy, does it say a lot. Let's go to... Oh, good Lord, why do you keep doing that? Um, let's go to their page, and I will read out the about... for the game. So the uh, for or the second paragraph, which is the actual part of this, uh, that actually talks about the game, uh, Mountain Bike Trials, also known or, as Observe Trials, or uh, Stock Asset Twenty Sixteen. Yeah, hold on, it, it gets better. <laughs> um, Observe Trials is a discipline mountain bike or mountain biking in which the rider attempts to pass through an obstacle course without setting foot on the ground. Trials Riders extremely or is extreme test of bicycle handling skill of all kinds of obstacles, both natural and man-made. Uh, this game was 100% indie and made by just a single person. So Which I, I I give people credit where credits due. Making a game by yourself is impressive. Yeah. Look at Stardew Valley. A look at Cave Story. Don't look at this. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, oh boy, where to start, where to start, where to start. Um, I, I don't even know. <laughs> so right off, asset. yeah, right <laughs> off the bat, uh, the graphics for the person, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, the bike graphics are okay, except for... I want to say the pedals. The pedals kind of look like some sort of flimsy metal they kind of found on the side of the road and went, those will work. <laughs> um, there is no options menu. I didn't realize that until I looked. <laughs> oh, there's no option menu. Uh, I think the art style is kind of cool. Everything is kind of uh, very kind of pastel-ish. Which for a, uh, uh, let's see here. 
with the way that this game is set makes sense. It makes sense in the way this game is. It's an indie game that's or, or designed to be nothing but an indie game. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind it's supposed to be a simulation game. And uh, hey. it, it's not so much simulation when we get down to the brass tacks. So let me just read uh, <coughs> let me just read to you what it says on the side. So we got logs, block, basic, urban, woods, river, and comp. Those are all the different levels you can choose from to try and uh, go through. Then you can uh, then they have bike customization. You can go to the gym. Uh, you can customize your rider. Then they have a help menu, editor, high score, and multiplayer. I can tell you multiplayer is 100% broken. Uh, high score doesn't matter. Uh, and the quit button barely works. <laughs> um, me, I, uh, in 20, 2016, 2017, when do high scores matter anymore? Like, those are arcade things. Yeah. Um, like, now, uh, this game is a very Trials-esque game. It's like trying to take Trials and turn it 3D. So as you can see, there's sliders for uh, rider, or rider size, stamina, and sound. Audio is god awful. <laughs> You're better off not having audio in the game and doing it yourself, or like just listening to music in the background. Um, you can change the color of your bike. That's the only thing that actually stays. Uh, rider size doesn't do anything but off balance your guy even more than it should. Um, stamina, yeah, stamina slider never, um, never actually stays in place. So that doesn't matter. Um, the only one that actually works properly is the sound one. Uh, moving on to the next screen is the gym. The gym was the first thing that I uh, did. Now, if you look at the character model, he did nothing but pecs and calves. This man has no biceps. No forearms, no thighs. Can I can I just say that it looks like your fucking elbow is broken in that photo? Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, <laughs> this is the chair has better and or better quality of design than the person. Let's put it let's put it that way. Um, so as you can see on this one, my stamina level is all the way up. We go to the next one where you do uh, pull ups. My stamina is all the way down again. It does not save your stamina. Weird. Legs, arms, arms one. Yeah. What? Uh, the, the first arms is you lifting weights, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, just like this one no. doesn't. But the animation is as horrible as you'd hope it is. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through each one of these, and I want you to watch the hand to forearm movement as he does a pull-up. It doesn't even look like he's off the ground. He doesn't move. His entire body stays completely parallel to the way that he originally did it. It just lifts up and down, and the hands are stuck in place, so the arms are forced to move with the hand. <laughs> My god. Yeah. Let me see somebody do a pull-up. Let me, let me see, dude. Also, by the, by the way, it looks like your fucking forearms snapped at some point. Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely. Oh. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Your hand's curling into your forearm. That's <laughs> yeah. not natural. Yeah. Who does this? Yeah. So that was obviously just a copy paste. And then it was literally just you moving a scroller that pushes your character up and down. And the arms were essentially just strings that were attached to both. Um, <sighs> so moving on swiftly. <laughs> This, this this gym is, like, so nondescript as well. Like, you have, again, single-game people. Axiom Verge. Stardew Valley. Cave yeah. Story. Beautifully handcrafted games. And then you get this. <laughs> this is the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next page is kind of... You can change uh, riders... And I changed the color of my bike to purple to see if it would actually stay that color, which it did, surprisingly. 
um, and your writer changes, but once you change your writer, uh, you can't adjust the writer size anymore. Um, so that's stuck um, the way it is. Okay. <laughs> so you change your writer and you break the writer size. You even go back to the original one and it no longer changes size. Uh, so let's start to start going through the maps. Or excuse me, we're going to go through the help menu first. Now the help menu is the most asinine thing I've ever seen. Um, it starts as a scroller. Like you're looking through film. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the controls for this, they want you to use Escape, Q, E, W, S, and D, Z, both alts on either side of the uh, space bar, C, V, and N. Then they also want you to use all three mouse buttons. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's as bad as it sounds. Like, just the placement doesn't make sense. No. Like, WASD, of course. QE makes sense. Z, that could have been switched to tab. Uh, N, which is completely fucking out there. Yep. Like, and, right, and alt. And alt. Yeah, the far alt makes no sense. V is kind of a stretch, too. Yeah, like, that's uncomfortable. Like, again, I go back to Overwatch. Uh, hitting V for melee in Overwatch is fucking challenging. Yeah, I've gotten used to being able to snap my uh, finger that I usually have on D down for it. Oh, see, I go with uh, I try and go with the 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 thumb, but I usually end up fat fingering goddamn <laughs> communication. So yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, I've just gotten used to flipping my finger over because I uh, there's not too terribly much to melee. Anyways, uh, moving on swiftly to the next one. The next one is telling you how you're supposed to jump over something. It says click right mouse button to go back up on wheel. Click left mouse button to uh, pedal kick. And uh, pedal kick. it's supposed to push the bike forward to kind of <coughs> move your momentum. And it'll you're supposed to force your guy forward and backwards by rocking. And click right mouse button and quickly V to turn off back wheel and uh, land on front wheel. So overly complicated. Yes, you want to know how well that works? Uh, about as much as a potato. It doesn't. It does not work because half the time your controls don't respond because your stamina is far too low. And since your stamina is not allowed to be fixed and allow it to gain uh, stamina, it doesn't work so well. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is essentially the exact same uh, section. But they tell you how to land on your rear wheel. <laughs> Which is even more complicated than the first one. And the neck, this image right now, I'm just trying to show you that it's a wheel. It literally expands whatever is in the center of the screen. Like you're looking at it through a uh, fish lens. Uh, Which is the worst way you can do something like this. Absolutely. And it, it goes on for about three or four pages of telling you how to do more and more advanced things that don't work because you don't have enough stamina to move. <laughs> um, so the game takes into account popping your tires, so on and so forth. Um, and a fault in this game for some reason is called a dab. That, yeah, yeah. So this is the yeah, this is the first level. It's called Logs. Uh, big surprise, it's filled with nothing but logs. Um, so, I couldn't get up on the first obstacle, and I tried a lot. I, I, I probably sat on this level for about 20, 30 minutes, trying to get him to do anything. I don't like the fact that there's, like, the anchors are visible. Yeah. Like, it's just... Why are anchors visible? Oh no, th small. those aren't anchors. What those are is it's supposed to show you where you're supposed to go. It's supposed to be the uh, course marker. Um, this game has no moving parts other than you and the bike. So, jeez, uh, you can walk through this entire map without the bike, so you can get a feel for the map. Which walking mm -hmm. is the only smooth part of this fucking game. <laughs> it's the only thing he got right 
But, I mean, it's one of the few things he got right on this game. Um, all the textures on this are basic textures. As you can see, there's literally no depth to any of these textures. Um, which is fine. It looks like an AutoCAD um, design. But you see all those little, like, ropes and stuff? Mm -hmm. Those are supposed to be chains. If you break a chain, uh, you get kicked out of the map. What? Yep. Huh. Uh, if you pop a tire, if your guy gets too winded, um, or if you somehow manage to fall over, uh, it counts as a dab. Five dabs, you're out. Then you have to restart the map completely. Um, if you can even get started to begin with. Oh, no, you can get started. It'll load into the game pretty well. Oh, I mean, like, getting on the first obstacle. Yeah, so when you first load into a map, I went back to this image, um, you basically have to get onto the bike. You can walk around, and then when you're ready, you get onto the bike, and then it brings you over to this weird, like, isometric view. That is mm. actually the worst thing for this game. This game honestly needed to be 2D. It would have made it better. It would have made it easier. It would have. It, it would have. And I think going 3D was very ambitious to start off. Mm -hmm. The controls were wonky. Uh, certain things move faster than they should. Um, and none of it just... None of it made sense why it was happening. There's no explanation on why it was happening. There was no tutorial other than those few little things. Yeah. Uh, the next one we're going to go on to is a, uh, a map called Block. I get onto the first obstacle and that's it. Uh, you got stuck trying to go to the second obstacle because no matter what you did, you'd fall down to the center. Um, and as soon as you got down there, you were stuck. You couldn't do anything. Oh, and when you did get a dab, it also forced you to sit in one position with no way of uh, stopping it for a solid about 10 to 15 seconds. Mm. Yeah, you should never not allow your, uh, your player to stop moving when it comes to a yeah. game like this. Because uh, we want to continue moving. Um... So yeah, this one was a massive pain in the ass, and since all these are straight blocks, you pop your tire every time you hit an edge or something, and fault pretty often. I honestly don't see how you can make that fucking gap. Uh, you can using some of the uh, physics, and I air quote physics because your bike just kind of levitates when you jump. Uh, like it just, it literally just lifts straight off the ground. In whatever position it is um you can use it to get to different places but sometimes it just like most of the time it doesn't go far enough or whatever mm -hmm. um this next one is called basic it's literally just a basic course that goes around a quick circle and it's meant to be easy i got up as you can see where i got from the starting is literally one spot across and you can't touch the log apparently or it counts as a fault so it I got one fault, literally, from moving from the start to this position. <laughs> um, yeah. So. That's ridiculous. Yep. Within nine seconds of me starting this, I already had one fault. <laughs> uh, this next one is called Urban. Uh, urban, as you can see, it's supposed to be set in an urban area where, for some reason, there's just a dump that you're riding a bike along. Also, can I just say in basic that there's people watching you? Oh yeah, there's uh, in uh, in urban there's people watching too. Um, this one is relatively easy, but it still has a lot of very <coughs> weird obstacles that don't need to be there, and the funky movement system of the game doesn't really allow you to smoothly transition from one to another. Mm -hmm. Um. The next one is called Woods. Um, this is kind of all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason for which way you should go. There's no set course. It's kind of just out there and do whatever. But there's still markers. And there's still like chains in the way that... I guess force you to do stuff. But 
don't make sense yeah. why they're there. And yet again, the physics lets you down in this particular situation because you literally just spring upwards instead of going forwards and upwards, and it's just kind of a mess. <laughs> It, it just look, that whole stage looks like it's a mess. Yeah, uh, Rivers, the next one. Uh, Rivers, kind of cool. It's the only one that actually has like water, um, which isn't bad. They did a pretty good job with the water. Uh, but yet again, it's another one of those things of where do you go? Like, I understand this is supposed to be like kind of a free riding thing. You can do whatever you want, but mm -hmm. There's no start or finish to the ends of these levels, so you can't really use it as a trials type situation. Yeah. Uh, and the final map is called Comp. So I guess it's supposed to be some sort of competitive level. Because uh, that makes sense. Yeah, and it's exactly like all the other ones. It has no flow to where you should go. So I don't know how this is supposed to be a competitive level. Um... You can move all about five feet, and then you're kind of stuck with nothing to do. Mm. Um, so let's see here. Let's. Um, so it actually has like a lot of customization options that you can do. Uh, apparently, you could do tire tread, or you can unlock tire treads, uh, grip patterns. I don't uh, like the grips for your bike. You can adjust your wheel size, brake size. Uh, you can adjust the angle which your brakes come in at. Your gearing you can adjust. Ooh, the fork offset, excuse me. Um, head tube angle, I, I assume that's the, uh, the uh, grips on the front or the uh, mm -hmm. handlebars. Uh, tire pressure. You can reduce or increase that. Uh, I, BB rise, I have no idea what that is. Or the back brake, I don't know. Um, and your wheel brake, or your wheel base. Um, from there, yeah. you can tighten your track, but, uh, or not your track, but your um, chain. Chain. Which, if you start looking at these, I have about three different screenshots of them, and not a single time. Is the chain working the way it should? <laughs> it's broken. Yeah, it broke. Um. So pretty much the only pros that I can basically set in this game are that it has a lot of customization, and the map ed or the map editor is very basic, self-intuitive, and it works really well for some reason. Like that's the one thing this game is good at is having a fairly good map editor yeah everything is on sliders it either goes ups down left right or back and forth um and you can pretty much spawn in whatever you want and the game's okay with it because everything just kind of clips together um other than that that's that's all i got for pros cons it's there's oh my god there's so many bugs in the game the second time i booted it up it crashed. Um, the controls are terrible. They, like nothing turns the way it should. It, it just doesn't. Um, the forward and backwards movement is way too fast for what it should be. Um, the controls are way all over the keyboard. Doesn't need to be in that way. The stamina training doesn't make any sense. Why is that in this game? You don't need that. You don't need stamina training. You you need you need to work on core mechanics. You don't need to add little gimmicks like that. Yeah. The physics is atrocious. The physics just doesn't make sense in the game. Uh, graphics are subpar. They're they're bordering PlayStation like early PlayStation Two graphics. <laughs> um. None of the sliders work. Like half, like literally none of them work. Which is ridiculous. Like the fact that it's even on the store. Yeah. Um, this should be an early access game. This should be a free to play yeah. early access game. Um, uh, 
all the characters that you can choose from. There's like four different characters. They all look the same. They're all overly pixelated. Um, that just they're, they're not. They shouldn't be in the game. There's no need for all this customization that you put in the game. Um, and most of the time, the controls, whenever you hit them, they don't work. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So, um, my final thoughts on this game. Uh, the game came out in December 19th of 2016. Uh, it should have came out in early access of December 19th of 2016 as a free-to-play title. Um, the fact that you're making people pay to play this game is ridiculous. It's not ready. I understand doing it by yourself, but honestly, you should have thrown out early access, and you should have had some sort of feedback and let other pe or let people play this for free. You would have got more people to play it. You would have got better feedback. But since people had to pay for these games, um, they're not going to be happy about it. They're going to be nothing but angry and very, 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 very harsh on their reviews. Um, yeah. You need you, you, this need to come out in alpha testing so that people can tell you what bugs there are, what you need to fix. Um. <clears throat> and basically what needs to happen before anybody should even think about playing this game yeah it, there's just a lot of bugs that need to be fixed um, you need to simplify the controls and the physics needs to be worked on in such such a deep way that you cannot cannot call this a simulation game <laughs> Um, so much work. Like this is this is like a, a school project. Yeah, the, this is school project. Which even for a school project, the controls are way out there. Um, yeah. There's a lot of room for improvement. It's only been out for about a month now, and since it's only one person, I'm not expecting the world from it in a month or two. I feel like this game could be kind of cool at some point, but. There, there needs to be a lot more time and development put into the game. Um, yeah. Especially with a uh, Trials-esque game. I think 2D would have been the way to go. Um, so at this, I'm going to have to give it a 2 out of 10. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gets 2 points because it actually somewhat runs. And uh, the fact that it, it got to this point as somebody who's... This is obviously a novice game developer. This is kind of their first run at a game. And they got a game running which is more than I can say of anything that I've tried to do for a game yeah that's 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 probably best um, I I could not do this I have tried programming and I failed miserably Yeah, I mean, it just has a lot of room for improvement because it, it's. Yeah, it it just one person not holding a breath. Yeah, it's. It's kind of one of those things of they tried. They they're trying, and, yeah. and you're trying something new, and it's just. It's I would have done. The fact that it got on the Steam store is impressive. <laughs> Take that as a win. Yeah, the fact that it got on the Steam store and that it wasn't considered early access is impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but I definitely would have. 100% put this as a um, early access game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like bare bones early access game. Yeah. Like th this is one of those games that you look at and you're like this is ported from a PlayStation 1 or 2 wasn't it? <laughs> Don't lie to me. 
Um, don't don't fucking lie to me on this one. Yeah, I'll know. I'll yeah, fucking know. Don't try to play me a fool here. <laughs> um. But yeah, this this game I could not recommend until some some very heavy updates happen. Um, if they happen, like you're hoping for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah, I'm hoping for the best on both these games. Ram, I hope. I hope we can get players into it, and I hope that we can um, get that going. Yeah. And, and I hope we can bring the developers back and see what they want to do with it, and see what kind of uh, see what kind of angle they were trying to go for. Um, I'm going to see if I can't get a hold of some of the developers and see what their original goal for it was, and see what they really, really, actually want to do for. It or do with yeah. it and then we might have an update on ram to see where that's going in the future because i believe that game could go somewhere pretty uh pretty well but no seat no seat is one of those things of it's going to take a long time to see if it goes anywhere yeah um uh, yeah all right so Definitely. i th yeah i think that's going to be it for uh this podcast and uh shoot actually three hour podcast <laughs> pretty I, good yeah we covered quite a bit um <laughs> i i feel like oh i'm returning to streaming on monday oh nice yeah. so uh i've been lethal taco and i'm clay tour 22 Thanks for watching the second podcast, and hopefully we can keep this trend going of a, a weekly podcast, Saturdays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for watching. Right. Have a good weekend. Bye.